All right, everyone. Good morning, and welcome back to the Crazy Crafter live stream. Uh, your weekly terrain tutorial in uh, all thing all things uh, tabletop terrain. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Colin Bressy. I am the Crazy Crafter, joined as always by my wonderful co-host Michael Patterson from Nat One Videos and the producer of the Crazy Crafter live stream in the flesh, Daniel West, ladies and gentlemen, and our featured guest today. From the DM's craft, DM Scotty himself. Yay! Holla! <laughs> Welcome, Scotty. <laughs> hey, thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, man. Oh, not not a problem. Glad to be here. This is going to be so fun. I think so, too. Um, we have already gotten a sneak peek of, of Scotty's uh, build from today, and... Uh, we, after we spent the next, you know, few minutes picking our jaws up off the floor, we got really excited. Um, we're, we're stoked with you, uh, to, to be building with you today. Um, as we couldn't have Scotty on the show and not build a monster. I feel like that's how do, how do we, how do we not build a monster with you on the stream? Exactly. So, um, we're, we're excited. Uh, and this is, this is my first monster that I've ever tackled. Um, last week when I, I kind of did my mock-up after chatting with Scotty and followed some of his techniques, and I had a blast with this one. This one was a really fun build for me. Um, I think for me personally, the fact that I, um, I don't know, like it, the foam is great, and it's, it's, I don't know, it was out of the comfort zone. It's something new, right? And uh, a bonus to it was my son had a blast and an absolute uh, fun time making a mess of everything. He, he now knows how to, how to, how to do uh, paper mache. The first paper mache technique he learned Scotty was the DM Scotty way. So he, uh, he's, he's set now for life. <laughs> um, cool. How's it, how's everyone doing? Michael, how you doing this week, brother? Doing good. good. I'm way behind. <laughs> um, you guys are, <laughs> so I'm, I'm basically starting from scratch. I've been trying to catch up just before the stream here, just to get an armature together. But yeah, other than that, I'm ready to go. Um, I'm definitely not getting finished today. A crazy, a crazy crafter co-host is never behind. He builds his piece exactly as he means to. Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Barely where we're at. That's where we're at. Danny, yeah. how you doing this morning, brother? I'm doing, I'm doing fine. We're doing good. good. I'm going to be monitoring the chat. You're going to be watching my build station mostly. Sweet. And, uh, I'm happy to, to do this. I've got, I've got a weird shambling something that's, got, that's halfway built. That's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to share, to share, um, uh, when we, when we dive over here, uh, when, when we start, um, uh, we'll wait on the, I think we should wait on showing what we've got. We should talk about the build first and then what we're what we're going to do but scott are you doing okay over there everything great on your end fantastic good, fantastic brother. good um well welcome to all of you hope you're doing well out there if you are new to the channel and this is your first time here um we offer weekly to terrain tutorials every sunday uh, more content is going to be offered as 2021 offers but Thank you for joining us today. If you're new and you've this is your first time in the stream, please type type uh, type new in the comments below. Introduce yourselves. Welcome to the Crazy Crafter community, and be sure, guys out there, we are seven subs away from 300 today. So, if you are if you are new and you have not subscribed, please 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 subscribe to the channel. Can we hit 300 today? I don't know. Don't really care so much about that right now as much as I care about uh, building this shambling mound with, with DM Scotty. So, Scotty, uh, lay, it, lay it down with us. Now, you dubbed this a shambling town when we had our conversation. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about why you, you – what your concept was behind the shambling town. I wanted to make something absolutely terrifying and cool. Uh, you know, you could you could have this thing just, you know – tearing up towns uh you know wh whatever evil you know thing is behind it you know it's tearing up towns adding more to it maybe it's getting bigger you know as it <laughs> as it adds to it so i wanted to have i thought visually it'd be really fun to have chunks of a town you know stuck into this thing not just a slimy a slimy mass like a, a shambling mound uh, generally you think of right but actually stuff stuck into it and it's incorporating stuff like one hand i've got like a rock that's like a chunk of rock that's like attached to the arm. So it's like a big battering ram, you know, kind of thing. Nice. Um, you know, I got an outhouse on the back. <laughs> so just, uh, <laughs> just fun stuff. You, you literally know? threw 
everything at this at this build you're like i'm gonna throw it all on there um and i use just about every technique i've ever used in this build so um yeah this is kind of like a combination of just all kinds of uh techniques uh to get something and you, and you can see how it all can just come together uh you know uh, sometimes it just, you, you're kind of putting the stuff together and you look at it and it's like, well, this is a pile of junk. Mm -hmm. But then you you add that paint let that you start painting it and like suddenly it comes to life and it's like, wow. Because once you get that base coat on and everything's the same color, you can kind of see where it's going. And then you start painting it and wow, you know, everything pops out yep. and uh, all your work comes to, uh, you know, to the final awesome project that you can put on the table and your players are like, whoa, you know. So. Well it's it's definitely yeah something uh i think before we started the stream today you're like i want to something you put on the table and your players are like ah like freak out freak out like that's gonna kill us right now that's gonna tpk the entire the entire adventure uh party right now i i i, I love i love this um i love the idea of this build and this concept and a lot of the things that i really appreciate always from from your channel scotty is taking materials like you don't you don't need you don't need a lot of you don't need expensive fancy tools or equipment you can very wow. very um very cheaply um gather some really really cool materials that are fun to work with that are fun to build with and then you can create these amazing pieces in the tabletop so it's it's definitely i know i know I, i'm probably i definitely am preaching to the choir right now when when we say that but that's that's something that that uh that uh i've, I've always appreciated and enjoyed about about your channel is being able to to uh to create a lot with um with whatever you have at your uh disposal exactly and that's yeah. what i've always you know it, my my channel can kind of seem all over the place as far as like techniques and style, you know different ways to do things but the idea behind it is that i want you to make not be intimidated for one thing and i want you to make whatever whatever you you can salvage if you can mm. salvage cardboard use cardboard if you can salvage cork or you know uh, foam use that you know use what you what you have because you can make anything out of what you have right. and that's what i've always tried to stress on my table it's like oh you don't need this and this and this and this you can substitute this and this if you don't have this so that's what i've always tried to stress as far as crafting cool uh and uh okay so with the 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 base of this like obviously the kind of the first place that um you know we got to start is we got to form the body, right? To do this, we're gonna do be doing a. Um, or at least I'm gonna be doing the paper mache technique uh, um, uh, today. Um, but I, I, what are you using to start with your base, Scotty? I am going to use simple uh, toilet paper rolls. Now nice. I'm going to do the the base of the critter um, with my technique of um, paper towels and toilet paper. Yeah. So I'm just gonna use a board. Okay, a cutting board, a cheap cutting board. And then I'm going to basically scrunch it up, slap it on here, and then kind of form it into a circular shape. And let me see if I can find that here. So here I have one done, okay? This is gonna be my base mm -hmm. of the project. It's hard. Mm. This, this glue, white glue and toilet papers and paper towels get really hard. So you, ha you, know, ha you have a nice hard base, but also, what I did was I layered some sand in it, like I'll, I'll pour sand in it and then fold the paper towel over it. Yep. And then uh, that gives a little bit more weight than it would be if it was just paper towels and toilet oh, paper. Oh, nice, nice. Okay? So yeah, I just, I just uh, you know, put it on the, you know, did it on the, uh, the cutting board like this. Yep. And then, you know, once it dries, you just kind of peel it off. And you got a bit, you got a nice hard base like that. That's really neat. I, I didn't even think about the sand folding it, folding it in, and adding the weight to it. That's re that's really clever too. I like that a lot because it's something that can get pretty, uh, be pretty pretty light. I thought my mine, I, <laughs> I made mine so beefy it didn't matter. So I'm like, I don't <laughs> have to worry about folding sand into it. Um, <laughs> cool. So uh, you're starting out with with the base there, and then f folding it on top. I, I I started with mine when I built um when I built mine earlier in the week. I I um I had this vision of this really meaty, hulky, uh, 
monster or, or critter, as you call it. I like how you called it a critter earlier. I was like, critter? This thing is like, in this, this ain't no critter like I ever seen before. Um, but the uh, I wanted this meaty, meaty, monstrous thing that I, I, I wanted I wanted it to be an intimidating presence. But I was thinking, I, I tried to sculpt some definition and tone, but also kind of like this deformed mon monstrosity. So I used tin foil to kind of just shape it and kind of just layered on... I kept just layering tinfoil on tinfoil, starting up, like, just rolling it together and then shaping it from, like, using the tinfoil as clay, which I really enjoyed. And that I really uh, think is cool because it starts layering in some of that texture in uh, for, for the Shambling Mound, too. So um, I'm starting with tinfoil. What are you starting with? What did you use yours, Danny? I was muted. You were muted. Uh, Yay! <laughs> so... Mine, I, I started with uh, tinfoil as well, but I'm going to start a new one. And as I ran to my uh, supply area to uh, see if I had some fabric, I, I found we had an entire package of pipe cleaners, oh. black pipe cleaners. So I'm going to make a shambling mini, I think, to accompany my shambling mound. And oh. I'm going to try to make an armature out of the, the pipe cleaners and see if I can't just use some of that natural fuzz to get Ooh, something going on there as well. So. That'll be fun. I, it's like your play. your your mini mound br sprout, sprouted some roots and laid a seedling out, and it's gonna it's gonna wreak the, the it's gonna wreak havoc on on the tabletop. That's a, that's well, that's pretty epic. Just as a DM, I really do like minions. I love having <laughs> min minions on the table, um, and so uh, so yeah. I, I my my party tends to kill the one big thing really really quick. They're really, really good at just killing the one big thing really, really quick. Uh, I've probably given them too many magic items. You know what I mean? I've probably buffed them up too much. Uh, bounded accuracy is, is over in 5e. In um, but, um, yeah, so I need to – I always have to throw extra things at them just to muck it up. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Do, um, do some shambling minis today. Sham shambling minis today. Uh, Michael, what are what are you um what are you what are you working off uh, the the base with? Where are you starting at? You're muted too. Schoolboy error. Good. That's um, good. You guys have never muted yourselves before on this stream. This is hilarious. I know. That's we weird. should, should we should take we should take a, a poll out there. Like how many times will will everyone uh, mute themselves and try to speak today? So this is, um, it's just like really uh, workable tin sort of mesh oh, thing. I like that. And you can I like that. You, you, can, you can basically put it into any shape you want and, and it holds its shape. And so like I've got this pack of dust clay that I opened to make some things and then it very much of it. And, and now I need to use it up before it dries out. So make this armature out of this and then cover it in in that clay that's the plan anyway it's gonna look cool i like that that's yeah. that mesh that mesh reminds me i think so your brother danny is i know we're gonna you told me not to but i got to he was a genius last week um uh, we uh, on the sh on the stream scotty um daniel's brother joined and was hanging out with us and we were using cheesecloth uh to cover some medieval wagons or i was using some cheesecloth as like the canvas cover and when you when you put the wash on there, it hardens up really nice, and it's got this really cool like fabric effect. And Danny's brother is it Bradley? It's Bradley, yes, yes. Bradley was suggesting he's like you should use the cheesecloth when you paper mache um, over the shambling mound for some texture. And I was like, oh, that's such a good idea. And uh, I threw I threw that on um, as the top final layer after. After we, um, I laid on the paper towels on there and it started, I like frayed it a little bit, stretched it out and it has this really cool viney effect. You can take it and twist it and then seal it with the glue and wrap it around like vines as well. So, uh, the point as, as, as in all things craft, like there's so many different approaches and different techniques. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to come up with some really cool stuff today and it'll be fun to see where we get to. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Scotty. Well, Take us away. What's what's kind of the first first step here? Uh, now that you've got if you've got your base made, what uh, what would be the next step for uh, for us here as we're making the mound? For me, what I why I made the base first was because 
it needs to dry, right? Because yep. it's saturated with with uh, 50% water, 50% white glue. Yep. Um, so it needs to dry. So you, there are several ways you can do that in the summer. You can put it in the car because yep. your car gets hot. You yep. can put it in there. That helps yep. to dry it yep. quicker. You can put it in the winter time. You can put it by a vent, a heating vent, and yep. that the air, the hot air blowing out of the vent will actually harden the stuff quicker. Uh, there are different ways. Um, you can put it in a very I. I don't do this, but I've heard people do this. You can put it in a very low temperature oven. Um, that makes me a little bit nervous, um, so I don't do that. But uh, there's, there are ways you can speed up the process. But in any event, we need time for that base to dry, right? So what I like to do when I do crafts is I'll work on something and then let it dry or do whatever and then start working on something else so you get like the assembly line kind of thing. Yep. So yep. you want to think about, you know, logically how should you proceed um, you know, with the project. But the next part I wanted was, well, I need the shambling mound creature, right? So I'm going to make the armature for it. Okay. okay. There are different ways you could use wire. You could use aluminum foil. That's all great. Um, but I'm going to use an even uh, cheaper trash material. I'm going to use toilet paper rolls. Okay. Oh, now, nice. if you have a paper towel roll, what you can do is you can kind of measure you know, the paper towel and take your toilet roll and then cut it. So then you have, you get them the same length. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, you could even use, you could even use toilet or uh, paper towel rolls instead if you, if you had them. So what I'm going to do now is if I glue these together, this isn't going to look, this isn't going to be very great, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do to get some really cool kind of twisted texture on the thing is I'm going to take the toilet paper roll and just crunch it up and twist it and mutilate it. So kind of like that. Nice. And then just do it again. So I need an arm, a leg, two legs and a body. Mm. Okay. Now my thing is the body isn't big enough with one. So I'm going to have to use multiples with one i'm gonna switch over the camera here so you guys can switch see. it over forgive my foil cr I'm, as as i'm going this i was like i'm gonna wait on my foil crumping i'm like i'm gonna like make all of the noise over here so i don't know how how uh i'm gonna try to do it away from the microphone here as i crumple i can't hear it okay good 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 that makes me happy because that is the last thing i want to have happen did you switch over the camera there I had to find my tab. <laughs> oh, did you look it? You got it? Here we go. Yay, there we go. All there right, it is. Right. But here we got the we got three right now. So I'll uh, grab another one. Just start. And you guys can talk while I'm while I'm doing this. Sweet. So he's he's scrunching up. I'll switch over and I'll show mine uh, where I'm at right now. Um, we'll go to to this transition real quick. Boop. And you can come on over and you can see I've taken the um, this this base right here let me move move my guy up just a titch here there we go so just here, here's the thing like just while we're um having a little bit of a an interval kind of thing yeah. um i've never actually encountered a shambling mind in a game personally <laughs> so uh, give, 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 give us a rundown of what happens when you encounter a shambling mind well uh I will, I'll share, I'll share, I'll share it with, uh, I used it. So the first time I, 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 I ran a one shot for our campaign, I was going through and selecting the monsters and, uh, I, I'm really, really excited that, uh, I got to, got to use the mound because it is, it's really good for grappling and ensnaring players. So I put it as the last encounter I put a, there was a cursed medallion that I put in this pile of vines and I didn't think anyone was going to take it because I was like, well, if they go for this, this, I was like, it was definitely a honey trap. I was like, there's no way anyone's going to, going to go for this. And then of course, this is a, this is after like a three hour session. So like everyone's tired. It's the end of the night. And one of my players couldn't resist the shiny grabbed it. And I was like, oh, I'll try to like, I'll try to like make him see if he can just grab it and go because the mound was coming up and it was like vicious and I was like he'll he'll escape it because he's pretty good he's pretty pretty um uh, his strength stat was pretty good 
I rolled a nat 20 on the shambling mound and on the grapple check on, on the, on that. And I ensnared him. And then they proceeded another 30 minute battle fighting this mound. So like it can be, I, I don't know. Like I love, I love the idea of like, if a mound gets out of control, I, I'd want to see that in a game. Like what Scotty was describing. I'd love to see one just get bigger and bigger. And how do we deal with that? That might be a fun a fun multi-sessional encounter where players have to think how they're going to deal with the shambling mound and defeat it. Right. And you could, you could build different mounds. That would be fun. Yeah. You could have oh. kind of a larger than normal bat mound. Yep. Um, and you know, and it keeps getting bigger, <laughs> you know, if they, if they sort if you know, if they, if it gets away or whatever and they, you know, it survives and the next time they see it, you know, um, it's just even bigger. And then, you know, you can finally have the size that we're going to make today, you know, where the, the thing is, ma'am, you know, massive. And there's maybe they have to do other quests to defeat it. It's too big to defeat by conventional means. They have to find some way to, you know, quest some way to, to defeat this thing. <laughs> Colin, so there are currently concerns that we are a family show uh, yeah. and that your shambling mound that you are sculpting. What? Uh, Oh, come on. This, what are you talking about? It looks like... It, this, Gotta look at the camera, buddy. No, no, no. This is... This is... This, this uh, looks... We want to keep our PG rating. Listen. Listen. It's a family show. You guys... You guys... I can't help what comes into your crazy crafter minds out there. Like, you guys... You, you can think of whatever you want. But you all know the beginning stages of the project may not look like what you think they want to look like ultimately. So, anyway... It's going to be a, a ferocious looking shambling plant thing here pretty soon. Calm okay. down, everyone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing this together, and I'm going to use my hot glue gun, of course. Yes. Uh, that's quick and easy. So I got my hot glue gun. I like this Sure Bonder because it uh, has its dual temp, so you can make it lower temp for for styrofoam. Nice. You can. It also shuts off after a half an hour of of not using it. That's something <laughs> I probably need to get because I can't tell you how many times I left my poor hot glue gun on. Ugh. So, which, uh, oh crap! I think I, I think I had it sit too long and it's shut off. I'll have to let it. <laughs> I'll have to let it heat up again. But when you pull the trigger on the gun, it reactivates the the heating element so that's yeah. a nice thing because i have left them on before i'm like oh my gosh you know that's that's scary i've left them on um, over i've i've overnight yeah, it's yeah. terrible yeah yeah, yeah you don't yeah. want to you don't no. want to do that <laughs> and you know with hot glue be careful you know it's it's liquid heat and it <laughs> sticks to you um I, you know you're not a crafter a dm scotty crafter if you haven't burned yourself with a hot glue gun uh, unfortunately yeah hopefully people haven't but at some point you're probably going to oh, many um, many times many times i have you know um yeah i have i have it's rare but I, uh, it'll happen uh yeah as soon as this heats up i'm gonna glue these together so i'm just gonna glue these um toilet paper rolls together now i'm gonna glue three of them together to make the body and then the others will be the legs and arms oh nice okay, okay. So while this is heating up and I'm gluing this together, you guys can tell us what you're doing. I am just wrapping wire around wire at the minute. It's uh, looking more like a frog at the minute, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's it a frog. actually looks like Kermit, Kermit the Frog's running away. <laughs> Kermit the Frog's the running away from this, from this, <laughs> That's cool. This That's cool. Uh, I, I don't know if we have uh, the the... I don't think we have the rights to the Muppets, so uh, tread lightly. <laughs> Although with whatever I'm making yeah. here, like good, I guess it doesn't matter. We've we've sailed down that road, so it's it's all right. I uh, I, I think it's looking good there, brother. It's it's taking shape. It's yeah. taking shape. If you shape. put five heads on it, it could be Kuramat. Kuramat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm currently uh, we Dungeon Matron is in the chat today, and uh, when I was talking about the the shambling mini she said something about a shambling poodle and a shambling so, poodle yeah so i have scrapped my original plan and i'm currently working on making a a vine dog a vine you're, you're making a vine dog oh my we'll try goodness it. awesome I'm not, I'm not a sculptor but we're gonna give it a shot so. <laughs> oh i love it i love it well uh, that's the great thing with a mound you don't have to be a sculptor nope you just glue some crap together exactly. and you got it. That's right. And the general shape and you got it. 
Yeah, sorry guys with glue gun. Yeah, I'm probably actually paying far too much attention to making like I should just be throwing it together, but I mean Yeah, I'm enjoy I'm I, enjoying it now. Yeah, the 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 f this is a really 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 fun one. Like I something I want to do more on the stream here and more like just in in the hobby in general is uh, a little more sculpting. Um, I need to get some more. I, I have I have some air dry clay, and I have I really want to do more green stuff. I always love love um, all the all the tutorials with the green stuff um, that you know our fellow content creators put together. I know John Lombardi uses it all the time in his stuff, uh, but it's it's just something I really enjoy. Like the the sculpting process, I really kind of fell in love with it this last week. So it's um, I want to do more of it. More of it, please. More of it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Is there a particular um, – Scotty, is there a particular um, – like what is your favorite thing to sculpt with? Is it is it the the paper mache method? Is it – is there a particular one that you're you're fond of uh, the most and why, why do you like that method the most? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, a lot of clays have some – problem with them because we're not just making something usually we're using it in the game right it's getting transported it's getting moved around it's getting stored um right. possibly to take the game so your um clays can be fragile so even like um sculpey can be you know the the, the they have the extra strength sculpey even that can break like you know right. um Unfortunately, I found that um, I'm trying to think what the clay is. I think I have it. Um, oh, yeah. Let me grab it up here. Epoxy sculpt is really nice. Um, mm. It's a two part uh, epoxy you, you put together and it is rock hard. Like you can't <laughs> you would have a hard time breaking it. So it is difficult to work with. Um, but, uh, it's, it's fantastic in the results. Nice. Uh, now, uh, the, the, uh, air dry clay tends to crack a lot and it's not necessarily the best, uh, yeah. for doing that, what we're doing. Um, I do really like what I, I did a video on it, the, the white porcelain clay. Yep. Um, it's Dungeon a bit Matrix finicky to make, right it's now. a bit finicky to make, um, but when you get it right, it's amazing. It's rock hard, uh, and it it holds detail fairly well. It's not great for little teeny miniatures, but for like terrain type stuff, it's fantastic. Nice, because uh, it doesn't have the same problem as Sculpey, where it tends to break. Yeah, you know, when you have an armature, it'll break, and then the wire. You know, you can see the wire. Uh, so it's. It's a fantastic clay. You can actually buy the white porcelain already made. It's a lot more expensive if you do that than opposed to making it yourself. Okay. Where it's fairly cheap, but um, it uh, it's great. It's great, great stuff. And I, another thing I like to do with it, I'll see if I can find it here. I like to make teeth with it. Oh. Because it has this great uh coloring like bone like coloring yeah and so i'll make a bunch of little teeth and claws and that kind of stuff with it yep yep um and see it it almost has like a a translucent quality um at the very top levels of the clay itself and not all the way through you can't see through it but it's it, it gives a nice impression of claws and teeth so i love to use it use it for that so if you if you're making it and you have some extra i just make a bunch of claws and teeth that's cool you know uh you know rather than throw it away or you know whatever yeah. but uh so the white porcelain is fantastic um it's just a little bit tricky to make uh there's there are different recipes on the web i did a web, i did one where it's a, a microwave um and at the at last stages of when you're trying to get it to 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 bind together to work you're putting it in for like 10 to 20 seconds each, you know, in the microwave and then, you know, working it and getting it to the point where it needs to be. But, uh, um, and there's also stovetop ones that, that I didn't do in my video, but you can find on the, on the web. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend trying to make some, some porcelain. It, it can store for quite a while. 
Um, it's not forever, but it can store for quite a while. You, so you don't have to, as long as you put it in a plastic bag, you don't have to use it in the fridge. Oh, that's can help nice. That. That's nice. So you don't have to use it all. Yeah, it is. So you don't have to use it all up at once. So that's what I, I like. And I did that. We were talking earlier about my pur the newest purple worm I did, and yep. I did the purple worm out of that. Out of it, yeah. And yep. I would be terrified to do the purple worm's teeth out of anything but the white porcelain because they would have they would have shear off. Yeah. The moment you drop it, those teeth would shear off, right? Because I've got like all those, you know, dozens of teeth coming out of the multiple mouths. And any other clay it would shear off, but with the cold porcelain, it's strong enough that they won't. So um, that's one thing where using a clay like the epo epoxy sculpt or the cold porcelain can help, you know, when you have those little teeny details that are easy to break off, you know. Sounds like I'm going to, I mean, I've ever since, um, ever, you know, in when I reached out to you uh, a while back, like I went back to your channel and I was just like, oh, I'm going to check out check out uh some uh, some some uh, other content and the porcelain worm was new for me when i saw that i was like oh man i gotta i got i really i love how it it took the detail and how you were able to, yeah. to get that detail yeah. um sculpted sculpted into it and i was just like that's that's probably on the next i mean du dungeon matron here is is singing its praises in the chat so um i'm gonna uh, i'm that's uh that'll be that'll be one of uh, one of my next sculpting sculpting projects for sure of course porcelain clay build i'm not sure what i'll build yet but it'll be <laughs> i also did a weeping treant um Ooh, from yep. um a, a module called a uh, module uh, 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 a D, D module mm -hmm. and it's like the arms are really long you know and thin so that's like perfect for it i embedded like plastic branches into it mm -hmm. no problem uh you know it holds the detail the bark detail well so you know it's, it's great stuff it's great stuff cool cool have you sculpted um michael or danny have you guys sculpted at all a lot before or is uh is this is this uh oh, really no yeah yeah mostly carving for me um oh, yeah but i man. i want to get into sculpting a lot because a channel that I really enjoy, I've probably spoken on a few times here, is um, North of the Border. Yeah. I don't know if you guys follow him. Yes, I do. But he's just, he's got fantastic sculpting skills. I mean, he sculpts minis and the detail that he gets. He just did a Zelda one and it was just so good. Yeah. So, yeah, sculpting is something. Too. But then, you know, Carl as well from Carl Makes Stuff. That's he's, right. Um, making some pretty cool sculpted minis and stuff like that as well. Yeah, I'd like to get into it for sure. And so I don't sculpt. Um, I don't sculpt. Definitely not in this small size. I mean, there there are definitely parts of my job where I end up sculpting things. Right. Um, but uh, my job really revolves around people looking at things from thirty five feet away. Uh, so they're too, too, like, big. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm, uh, and I've done like some sculpture on like uh, prosthetics and stuff, but. Yeah, these little teeny tiny things, they're they are difficult. So uh, I'm, I'm practicing. Yeah, that, uh, they, they, can be, they can be difficult, yeah. Yeah, the... Uh, <laughs> I was trying to think of, like, what was the last thing I sculpted before, uh, before you know, last week uh, when I was making my the first Shambling Mound, and it would have been a middle school uh science project where i made a gray uh, gray um a, a black tip reef shark uh for for my marine biology class that would have been the last thing i sculpted in seventh grade uh i got an a on that project by the way because that shark looked awesome um uh so I'm, I'm glad i could harken back to my seventh grade biology skills to to help bring a shambling mountain to life uh um I'm trying to think of my biology teacher. Anyway, they'd have been proud. They'd have been they'd have been proud to see that the the uh, the shark skills move move on and live on to to uh, creating fantastic D and D monsters to slay my party with. <laughs> His skills in life. That right? skills in like that's right. <laughs> life skills. That's right. Life skills. <laughs> Little did you know. Probably may, maybe not intending for for it to be made for for D and D monster creation, but that's okay. That's okay. That's that's. Really Never cool. had to know anything about the reef shark for my life, but <laughs> the, pro the project, at the very least, taught me something that I took away. That's right. That's right. Um, 
All right, I've got my arms made. I've got my, oh my goodness, just like I did before. My arms are like he's like he he looks like some uh, wacky inflatable tube shambling mount initially. Like if you just like start flailing everywhere, these arms are definitely here. I'll show you, I'll show you all. They're looking just a little big. There, <laughs> they're here. <laughs> Put him at ya. He looks like he looks like a Rock'em Sock'em's uh, shambling mound right now. Currently, I need to, I'll, I'll need to trim these down a little <laughs> yes. bit. Come on, come on, <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. I'm a shambling mound. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right, let's cut these arms off a little bit. Actually, this one's not too bad. It's this one that I feel is a little longer. Let's cut that one down. See how that one does. Okay. So I, I do know some of the stuff that I'm going to put into this shambling mine, though. What are you um, going to add? Oh, yeah. Well, I had a pack of Citadel Skulls um, already. And then this week, I got a new pack of Citadel Skulls from somebody who sent them to me. Ooh. And in, this, in the pack, there's a large skull in the middle. Do you know the one I mean? I know what you're talking about. It looks like some giant like dragon or something. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna yeah. use I think I'm gonna use both of those embedded in in around and I think I might put like um well I mean I don't want to give anything away about Scotty's build but there's a few things that he's got in his one that he showed us earlier on that I really like and I might actually mm. copy him. Cool, cool. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, very nice. If you're gonna <laughs> steal, that's a good person to steal from. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, that's why do you think? Why do you think I show up to this channel every yeah, week, man? That's why. It's one of the reasons we. I, I I created it. I was just like I'm. I was like I don't have all the good ideas, but I like sharing uh, sharing ideas with people and and learning new stuff. So this has been this has been. Uh, it's it's a it's always a treat every week to to tune in with everyone who joins and and brings brings uh, all of their amazing techniques to share with us. It's fantastic. That's. You know, we talk about it every week, but it's always worth mentioning just how supportive the the crafting community is out there. It's quite oh, wonderful. totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, curious for about you guys out there in the stream. Uh, have you guys um, have you guys been uh, sculpting or crafting with anything i know i know dungeon matron was talking about using uh scotty's uh porcelain clay i know my nephew's out there in the chat somewhere uh so caden have you sculpted anything my uh, my my nephew's a really talented artist scotty and he it's just like he picks up anything and he's just like oh yeah i'll i'll, I'll work with that um like he, he <laughs> i'm i don't know if he's ever used clay to, to sculpt with before so you have to let me know put it in the comments there caden Put it in the chat. Have you have you sculpted with anything? I know um, on the uh, on the Discord server this week we had some stuff shared. Um, uh, someone was it a beholder? Someone was working on. I gotta look it up. Someone was yep. someone was crafting. Is is that Carl? Uh, that was Carl, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's gonna be an upcoming video that he's putting on. That's gonna soon. be cool. That's gonna be super cool. We'll we'll yep. we'll. Uh, we we always try later in the sh in the stream, Scotty. We'll 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 pull up the um, we'll pull up the work that everyone shared from the week uh, on the Discord server. Well, now it's on the Discord server. That's a good time to remind everyone. It used to be just kind of there's a little bit of Thunderdome. Mail me, message me, and I'll just like create a slideshow. But now we've got a, a Discord up and running thanks to so uh, Sonder from uh, from uh, the uh, Crazy Crafter. Um, uh, audience, he he uh, set up a Discord. Very, very, very thankful for that, Sonder. And now we've got a place to share all the work. So we'll show that here later on. Oh That'd my awesome. goodness! Oh my goodness! This 
I think I'm creating a sloth. It looks like a sloth right now. <laughs> like, I hope I give you a hug. Like he looks, it, it never looks, this stage always doesn't, I'm like, what am I doing? Like this looks, this is not what I want it to look like yet, but that's oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. At, this, at this point, it's just like, you know, what? <laughs> what, am, what am I doing? What, what have I done? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I glued a bunch of crap together. That's right. That's right. Uh, where where are you at now, Scotty, with yours? I'm just kind of waiting for it to set because um, the liquid hot magma glue, you know, it has to. Um... <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe while um, that's happening, um, Scotty, would, I mean, maybe you'd be up for telling us a little bit about how you got started with DM's craft and yeah. a little bit That'd about your channel and stuff. It'd be sure. cool to know. Uh, it happened. Um, geez, was it about about 12 years ago? I think. Wow. Um, I some friends at work wanted to play D Dungeons and Dragons. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I haven't played in years because you know I did the whole. I had kids and you know just no time for it. I did run them a little bit through some Dungeons and Dragons, but I didn't do much. And they're like, let's get a regular group going. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I also love you know, playing war games. And so, you know, it's very visual and everything. Um, but um, there are a couple problems with war games as far as like bringing terrain to the table, right? Mm. One is you sit around and eat your cheese puffs and drink your, your Coke, uh, you know, while you're gaming, you don't want to have to keep standing up to look over terrain, right? Right. Um, so I wanted to bring something. I thought, okay, if I do some kind of terrain, what can I do that won't, that make it so you can still sit down and see everything and you don't have to keep standing up because that's mm -hmm. what we do at war game. We barely sit down. You, okay. Line of sight here, you know, pass this thing and through this and all this. So, um, I wanted to avoid that. So what I did was I came up with, I called it the 2.5 D method where I took some cardboard, glued some strips of walls on it, and then just made different tiles to put together. And I was like, and the group, my group was loving it. And I was like, well, this is kind of a neat idea. I've never really seen anybody do this, you know? So I'm like, oh, okay. So I set up a camera, you know, kind of sheepishly did my first video, uh, you know, so crude by today's, you know, today's high production standards, you know, YouTube, they're out, you know, they got, they got freaking <laughs> editing suites and all this kind of stuff. I was like using, you know, uh, Microsoft movie or something, you know, and just, just shooting it basically and doing all the narration in camera and all that. Nice. So um, I just sheepishly threw this up and I thought, well, you know, this is pretty cool if somebody likes it. Um, and I got a few views and then I got a few more and then a few hundred and then a few thousand. And it was like, well, hey, I think this is catching on. So I kept I was going to actually just make, you know, maybe 12 videos to show kind of the the techniques that I was using. And then mm -hmm. I was like, well, people like this and they keep watching it. So well, I'll just keep making videos. Doing it. <laughs> so nice. here I am. Um still making videos um <laughs> but awesome, uh dude. yeah uh, i you know it's that's that's how i got started that's how i got started i just thought it was a good idea and i put it out there and now like the community you know the the crafting community has taken off and it's like there's so many groups um out in the community you know whatever your kind of flavor you know um yep. your flavor might not be my flavor so whatever flavor that works for your game, you know, um, you can find it, which is great. You know, yep. uh, I just love that. Uh, because I'm, you know, I'm very like, you know, more the more, you know, I don't do walls and I, I generally don't do buildings. I might do a front of a building, but I don't do a whole building and all this kind of stuff and, or a whole tower, you know, I'll do floors of a tower. I won't do the whole tower. Um, my stuff is, I try to make it very modular so I can keep reuse it and reuse it and reuse mm -hmm. it. But, you know, there's some people that love to do that kind of stuff, like actually have like, you know, a whole set up town and all this. Um, that's not my bag, but it's a lot of people love that. And so I think it's great because there's all these great people showing you how to do that yep. where, you know, I might not show you how to do that because it's not what, how I game. So, um, there are other people filling those niches for for people who want to go full bore, you know, everything out on the table. And I love that. I think that's, I think we're so lucky that we have so many people um, showing you different ways and different ideas and mm -hmm. uh, building off each other. And, uh, you know, it, it, it really is a great community. There are a lot of just fantastic people uh, in it. Um, <laughs> 
uh, it seems to be maybe less catty than some other. <laughs> some I think other so. Group. I don't. I definitely think it's it's definitely a. Um, it's it's I, I really feel like the support like you said it's definitely I don't I don't I don't catch a lot of that attitude it's all it's always just man it's all it's ever since I've reached out and always been asking everything um, you know especially when it comes to not just the tabletop crafting world but now now as you know delving into the content creation realm on um, and doing that in addition to the hobby like it's just been nothing but love and support so uh it's really really cool. It, well, I I it's it's pretty awesome, man. Like all because I love I love the fact that you know, the, the, it's it's so wonderful that your, you know, you definitely you definitely paved the way for 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 this community all those years ago. I'm I I, I <laughs> could you have ever imagined you would have spawned such such a such a such a big big movement and uh really the birth of this fantastic this, this hobby man like that that is that is something that that you planted you planted all those seeds and cultivated it brother it's really cool yeah i, I I'm, I'm just yeah that that's the one thing i'm proudest of that there's um that there is this great the great community now um you know um pe people did you know it wasn't like I invented crafting or anything. People right, did right. craft for D and D, but I tried to bring it. My idea was that anybody can do this, right. right? I don't want, I don't want you to feel intimidated. I want you to feel like, look at that and say, well, geez, I can do that. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so that was kind of my, my idea. You know, I didn't want to make it um, any kind of high art or anything where people felt like, Oh, there's no way I could possibly, you know, make that. Uh, I wanted it to feel like, Oh, you can throw this crap together and it looks it looks good and people you know the people at your table are gonna love it so right um you know it's something funny i was thinking recently i was like you know as the as the craft community has, has exploded it's like you know what if i never ever did that first video mm. and like we just you know now now 3d printing is getting really big and there's you can print all, everything you need for the game from 3d printing right right Right. Um, you can print tiles, you can print houses, you can print miniatures, yep. you can print monsters, you can print anything, almost anything you could make. Um, but I would argue that um, it doesn't have your, your, you know, your touch. And I would argue that not quite. You can't make quite anything. You could make you could make a lot of things, but, you, you know, the, your imagination is limitless. Right. So, you know, you can't you can't you know, there won't be everything. Um, an STL for everything. And if there is, you may not be able to find it. So, uh, you know, crafting, you know, is not obsolete, but anyways, uh, I thought, you know, like, what if I never did that first video and this, the crafting community never happened mm. and 3d printing came into its own, would there ever be, a, would there even be a crafting oh. community? You know, no, yeah. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm just saying that 3d printing may have eclipsed crafting. Yep. Yeah, as you know, that's yeah. what people do. They don't craft; they, they, they print. Right. So, but I love crafting because you made this. Yeah. Okay, this may this may be a toilet paper rolls glued together, but I made this. You know, I put this together. I didn't just put it on a printer and print it out. You know, this is something I actually made, and I think there's something deep. The thing in is, um, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say that I think there's something deep. In buy everything you get everything already made people don't make things um mm. you know generally uh so when you craft something like this you made this you know what i'm saying you made this cool thing that you're putting on your table and there's some there's satisfaction and there's pride from that yeah that you don't get from printing it or buying it yeah you know i always call it a labor of love too scotty because it's something that you've built to enhance the experience for for everyone else that that's there spending the time um, to share in this adventure, share in the story. Um, and I, that's I, a great way to put it. Yeah. I, I, it's it would it, like it, it, it is. And like, I, I totally feel that way every time. Like I cannot wait to meet in person again and play. And Oh my gosh, like, I know <laughs> there's going to be, there's going to be so many new things that like I've, I get to add and have on the table. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be even more epic. It's going to be even because I haven't person. played in person since the plague started. So, same, you know, um, same, same. it's all been online, online. So it's just, yeah, online. the game room is sitting empty, you know, just do you know, all my 
all my stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, the empty game rooms across across the world. Michael, yeah. you had you were, you had a comment or a question. You were you were saying something about to say something earlier. Yeah, I was. I mean, I, I was kind of slightly going to jump to the defense of three D printing, but not from the aspect of <laughs> um, like the, the like. For instance, we've got a friend uh, called Zen who yeah. is. He's doing the creative part as well, though, because yeah. he's using he's actually designing what he's printing. He's he's not just downloading someone else's STL files. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So 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 like if if you've got the design skills, it's it's an awesome crafting tool as well. Sure. That way. That is a great um, point. Yeah, if you have you if you have the if you have the three D skills, um, that you're right. You can um you can really get creative with it. I think Zane is a, an incredible exception, though, because uh, we love Zane. We want to get him back on here. Uh, but he's he's also an incredible crafter in his own right. So, yeah. like, Zane's a, Zane's a wunderkind, right? Like, so he, he's pretty <laughs> modeling things to print that he incorporates into his beautifully crafted thing. So he's got this, these wonderful hybrid uh, items that are partially uh, 3D printed, partially uh meticulously sculpted and crafted so uh we need to get zane back here again to make us all look bad again. yeah yeah his yeah. his his current his current thing and we'll share it later in the stream is he he spent he spent a he designed this elaborate he's currently working on this insane build scotty that's multi-leveled building that's just it's inspired from i think is it a game that he designed he made because he, he's, he's into video game design and he spent this 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 resin print was a ten hour print for this one door, so he like to give you an idea of like the design and detail that that Zane is working right. on. Like one wow, that's door, a, one that's door amazing. took all this time, so it's really cool. I think it is much much with just like the progression. I think you know that's that's what's really cool and the the realm and the possibility of 3d printing we are kind of just at the beginning of it yeah it's yeah, gonna oh, be yeah. oh yeah it's gonna be that's gonna evolve like think think in the future because as as time uh, progresses and increases the uh the print times are gonna go down too and they're gonna right, they're, the right. machines are gonna get more efficient and more materials, more different mater like print, so, print times. so many cool possibilities that that will enhance and add, uh, I think, to the craft too. But at the end of the day, like the the printing is fun, uh, but I, I definitely fall back to fall back to just making something with your hands. Yeah, and yeah. it's it's always it's always going to be be that enjoyment. Okay, there's, yeah, there's something about it. Yeah. I no longer have a phallic monstrosity <laughs> it is actually looking like a shambling mound <laughs> oh my goodness um oh. oh yeah derek derek in the chat is looking at the uh um uh the shambling mound stats for 5e it is a nasty one derek it's pretty cool um, it is. Mark is saying, "All hail the craft father!" By helping others, I will, I will, I will give that a hearty harumph, Mark. Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Very kind. We're not. Uh, yeah, yeah. We definitely didn't diss the three D printing, Caden. We 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 like it. It's definitely, no, not at all. I love three D printing. It. I do it and all the time. <laughs> he's suggesting now. He's suggesting to do a three D print craft episode. We could totally do that. Um, That's and I a think great we idea. should do that with Zane when Zane comes back. Like, there's we, can, so... we can sit here and watch our machines go for <laughs> yeah, two <we're> like... hours. <sighs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh we'll my goodness! The first level. Machines. The first yeah. level. We're at one percent. The the base of the supports have been solidified. Yay! Um, <laughs> Tina Tina is saying, like Gerard said, you can give a model, but everybody will make it a different way. Yes. 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 The different the different ways to constructing everything. Uh, or painting too. Or painting as well. Yeah. yeah Another. Yeah. I'm I'm a huge fan of frankie d crafter scotty and oh his, yeah his yeah. paint scheme i love his paint his he paint has such style. An, an, uh, an original paint uh yeah. paint style it looks yeah. so good i'm i'm yeah i'm always blown away by by frankie's by frankie's paint uh paint schemes um, oh i agree uh let's see dungeon matron is c giving you some love she loves how uh your uh, michael's critter is coming along <laughs> your critter is coming along quite nicely um, is Dungeon Matron uh, you, um, 
I, I've not heard the name before. Is she from like a have a YouTube channel or something I don't know. like that? I don't Tell know. us in the comments. Tell us in the comments, Dungeon Matron. Do you have your own channel? And when are you coming on the stream? <laughs> and that's just that's it too. Thinking. That's just it. That's what I'm thinking. Is it because we, we need to get some di diversity going on I, here? We need to get some. I'm I'm working on it. I I'm trying. I'm I've reached out to several. Have you heard of where the gnomes live, Scotty? Um, no. It's a gal named Sharon. Um, I, I'll have to, we have to, we'll have to link it. Danny, maybe you can find it. Maybe you can find where the gnomes live and link it in the chat for everyone. Yes, but please. Sh uh, Sharon's builds are awesome. She does specifically like little gnome house miniatures. Not necessarily, it's oh. not for the tabletop, but it's yeah. all like, I went to, like all of your, you'll gobble it up, Scotty. She's got so many oh, cool sure things like from using fish filter uh, plastic tubing to shape it into little glass lanterns for the tabletop like all sorts of really cool stuff she does some really cool um, paper clay work where she takes she takes the you know uh, tin foil um some uh or she, i think she just uses masking tape she uses masking tape and some old paper towel uh, tubing and then she she um she makes uh paper uh with the paper clay she makes some like hollowed out stumps and trees it's really really cool i want to i've i'm sending these emails i'm trying to get i want to get more 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 crafters i want i want some diversity from from the guests on the channel because that's what's oh, so totally. cool about the community is there's so many of us out there and you do not need a youtube channel to come on this stream like that is the beauty of this stream too like i just want if you want to come hang out and craft and you want to share some cool techniques email me at crazy crafter channel 1983 oh that's totally awesome email yeah. me and i want you guys on the stream i want to share your that. work like that's that is that is the beauty of this uh of of the stream in this community it's not just mm -hmm. it's not just people that have a, a a platform and have been sharing stuff like everyone that's what i love that's what i love about that what is that how many are in the group scotty on facebook how many is it Thirty-seven thousand, something like that mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. a lot of people y'all that's <laughs> a is, lot of material is. for a lot of streams for many 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 uh many Sundays and there are ahead. a lot of great crafters in the group that's right yeah you aren't content crafters creators. that aren't aren't producing videos they yeah. should right, come on right. show off their stuff yes right talk about in a different format what they do we, we want them if you if you see them hound them inside of uh hound them inside of the the facebook group do <laughs> burden uh, them um <laughs> that means that, so even just a briefest perusal of where the gnomes live um uh, shows that she's got amazing things. I put in a link to the playlist where she's specifically talking about making uh, fake trees, and nice. just by the thumbnails, they're gorgeous. Yeah, awesome, they're, awesome, they're gorgeous fake trees. Yeah. So, that Dungeon Matron says, "No, I'm just a junior crafter and a DM craft cult member." <laughs> DM, <laughs> DM craft cult member. Oh my gosh, I love it! I love it. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Look at that. We're five. Now we're at 295, everyone. 295. Oh, man. Thank awesome. you for, yeah. for the additional subscribe, subs, subscribe. guys. If you, if, you guys, if you guys haven't done so and you like the content, be sure to like the video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. Um, uh, let's see. Where else are we at? Uh, I've got this. Uh, are you are you macheing there, Scotty? You're, Scotty, tell us I a little am, bit about, yeah. about the mache technique. Yeah, I am. Uh, so what I did was I took my uh, toilet paper rolls and I wrapped um, paper towels around them first. Yep. yep. And now I'm kind of layering some uh, toilet paper on there. Oh, okay. That kind of smooths it out. Ah. Right? The the, toilet, the t paper towels are very rough. The yes. toilet paper smooths out the, yes. the surface. I see. That makes sense. But you sense. still get all this nice, you know, uh, ruffling and crinkling and – um you know all the all that texture that's going to be great for a mound like this yep yep you know oh my goodness i need to i have to shuffle my shambling mounds right now i've got the and one what i'm doing now is when i put the stuff on i'm using sometimes a, the toilet paper will stick to your fingers so you can use a brush when you wet it in water I, and that'll I, help yeah i like the brush yeah that I really can help the brush that that helps a lot um if, it, if you find it sticking to your fingers uh also um 
What was I going to say? Oh, I, with the water, I'm just using plain water. I'm not using glue mixed with water right now. Oh. Because I find that um, it tends to glue up the sprayer. And so oh. what I do is I just get the thing wet so it's it sticks together, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't put any glue on this yet. Oh, wow. Um, what I do is I, I'm going to do that after I get it where I want it. Okay. So that way it's not a sticky mess. It's just water. That's not a bad idea. See, I'm like gloving up right now because I'm like, I'm going to get glue all over my computer. <laughs> I'm like going to send that up. Um, but Derek, Derek saying, oh my God, that subscribe pop up. Are you, what, what's, you, did, did it pop up in a funny spot or are you just liking the, the new animation that I added in there, Derek? He's like, oh my, did it pop up in a weird way? I hope it, I, oh, I, I hope, it. I hope it did. I hope it did. It should. If it's not, it's not the crazy crafter live stream if something silly doesn't happen. So, um, let's see. What do I, I want to do a few layers of this. I'm not going to get this whole thing paper mache right now, but I really, I really, uh, I, I, that's part of my fun too. That I'm telling you, if you have a craft and you're like, oh, I'm not sure what type of craft to do, you know, uh, one of the things that I always enjoy with the, the hobby, Scotty, is crafting with my son uh, mm -hmm. to oh, a yeah. point of my own probably uh destruction and demise with my own wife because now our son goes around saying no 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 mom like that don't throw that away we're crafting with that that's crafting material so my poor wife has to deal with not one but two of us now um and but this is a really fun craft guys if you if you're looking for a first time project with your kids you don't need you just need whatever what you can use literally anything to sculpt on and this is such a fun a fun uh craft with your kids because it's paper mache it's messy it's sticky it's fun and they get to you know create and shape their own their own um their own whatever it is it could be a rock it could be a monster like pick a monster from the from the handbook and make it it's so fun and, and you know what i what i said with um with adults is even, I think, doubly true of children, you know, to make stuff with children. Yeah. Um, there's just so many, so many great things from that, you know, not yeah. to mention the bonding time, but just, yeah. you know, problem solving, just yes. having fun, being creative, making something yourself that yep. our society doesn't encourage you to do. Yep. Um, so it encourage you to buy everything. Yep. Um, there's so many, so many great things that, um, with a child. So yeah, don't, um, yeah, get that child crafting with you. You know, I know a lot of people that do. Um, now what I'm going to do with the... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just literally saying I literally got my daughter to do it for the first time the other day. It was great. <laughs> That's awesome. She got to taste Mod Pod for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I haven't really crafted that well. It's been kind of late in life that I started this, but my my daughter, you know, she's thirty, so that tells you how old, uh, you know, I was in Flintstones High School. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had we had clams. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, we we generally um, haven't really crafted much together, but we've painted together. Mm. Like she'll uh, we'll paint miniatures and stuff together, because uh, she always has some miniatures she wants painted. So sure. you know, I'll help her. And, you know, it's, it's always fun to sit there and paint with somebody, uh, you know, so we'll do that. But, uh, I do send her a lot of my crafts. So, cause she has her own game. Uh, <laughs> she has her own D and D she runs her own D and D game. Nice. So I do send her now it's, it's, it's all wet and so I've got it stuck together. I'm happy with it. What I did for the top was, you know, how it was kind of flat, like a, cause the toy bunched up paper towels and glommed them on onto the front and the top to be like kind of a rounded surface. Okay. Okay. So it wouldn't end up just flat like it was. Now I'm just taking 50% water, 50% white glue, and I'm just going to start squirting this on there. Now it will soak out of the, you know, it'll, it'll get on this cutting board that I'm using, but it'll, this stuff will actually soak it back up. Like if you lay it on the cutting board, it'll soak up the excess. Oh yeah. 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 Um, so let you know, let it sit for a minute. But once you get it all covered uh, and and soaked like this, uh, that's when you want to let it dry. And it can vary quite a bit. Like I said, um, anything you can do to speed it up, put it in front of a heating vent, 
put in a hot car. You know, uh, I've seen people use dehydrators, yeah. you know, to to do it. Um, I got I got really excited. I was just like, yeah, I'll put it outside. No big deal. This is perfect. Uh, you know, Southern California, we're in a desert. No big deal, right? What did it yeah. do, What did it do the majority of this week, Scotty? It rained. <laughs> oh, I was oh like, really? I was like, it's really? snowing here. It's yeah, snowing yeah, here. Yeah. I mean, I'll take the rain as opposed to, I mean, snow's nice. Snow's nice, I think, if you don't live where it snows. Like that, <laughs> exactly. Some people really it's like snowing. it. It's so, snowing here work. today as well. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it was this, this afternoon. Yeah, we had a bit of snow. It didn't lie on the ground, though. Uh, it sleeted last weekend here. There was sleet. I was, just, And it snowed in... Uh, I don't think it snowed. I don't, Danny. I don't think you got the snow, but it was snowing in Claremont, which is not f- like, like closer, <laughs> closer the snow snow that we're not normally used to having out here. So. Oh, we got it. We did got you get? Snow. Did you get the snow? Yeah, dude. I've got I've got a video of my son jumping on a trampoline with snow flying up off oh, of the. Oh, I yeah. bet he was excited. Yeah, they were they were loving life. I mean, uh, it's stuck on on uh, wood chip sort of stuff in the backyard, not into the concrete. But we we had some snow. It was nice. crazy. And I mean, for context, I live in the desert. Desert. Yeah, the so desert, this desert. was like the first time in fifteen years that it had snowed here, even for a moment. So it was it was a big deal. Yep. Well, I used uh, I, I let it dry. I was able to find a little bit of sunshine, and I, I I you know it dried relatively quickly. Like within that, I would say after that day, like it was able, mine dried up pretty and was ready to ready to rock for for the next stage. Um, yeah, within a, within a day, it'll be it should be if you do it, yeah. put it in front of a vent or something. It should be yep. dry enough that you can you can move on. It doesn't have to be totally solid dry no. for you to move on to the next step. I helped mine out a little bit with the hair dryer too. Um, uh, but you know, it, uh, it, it worked, man, it worked, it worked great. It worked, worked great. I loved, I loved, uh, I loved how it goes on and I'm using, I am sticking, um, full solid, uh, just PVA on the surface of the foil this time, Scotty. And it is going on and adhering much, much easier this time for me. So oh, good, good. that is a step that I missed on the first go around and I was like, why is this not sticking? <laughs> so I cheated Uh oh. and I pre-made one. Okay. So this one is, is solid and dry. Cool. You can hear, hear how hard it is. Yeah. That's solid. Um, that is solid. and yeah, that's just, that's just toilet paper, paper towels and hot glued together toilet paper rolls. That's it. Nice. And look, I can bang this thing on the table. It's not deforming. It's not breaking it. Um, no shambling mounds were harmed in the yeah, in the yeah. industry. <laughs> so it's pretty solid. You know, you're gonna get you're gonna get a good uh, thing. Now, when I was making this, I was like, okay, I want something really cool and menacing, kind of in the front. You know, that that would face the players. Yep. Yep. And and um, so lo- what can I do? So I thought, okay, let's make a cool kind of maw, right? But let's make one that's like looks like it would be on a shambling mound let's not make you know um a, you know a dragon or fangs or whatever right let's make something that would be cool right so here's what i came up with what i did was i took um a toilet paper roll of course mm-hmm. and then i'm going to cut it about an inch all right so i got this i got this oval here or circle i mean so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do little chinks out of the out of the paper uh, roll, kind of equidistant points. Yep. So I'm going to do four to initially. So and then I'll do one in the center of each of those. Okay. And I'm just cutting a little bit into the into the roll. Okay. So I got. I got that. So what I can do is I'm going to bend these a little bit. I don't know if you can see. Let's see. I'm going to bend, bend those nooks a little bit out because I'm going to have something fit between those. And what I'm going to have fit is these little shells I found 
at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> so there are these kind of pointy uh, little shells. So what I want to do is I thought, oh, these would be like great teeth, yep. right? Yep. So what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll take my hot glue gun, put a little dabble doer on there. Dabble do, dabble do. And then it take, up. <laughs> and then take, ooh, the end of the a strand there. Take the end of the shell, pop it into the hot glue and into the nook, and kind of have it pointing towards the center of the circle. And then the same again. Just keep doing it. Just keep going around. And I like the texture on these things. Like it's an interest. They're not smooth. It's an interesting texture. And is that getting um, those shells are creating that? Te that's the. Oh, it's it's this is for for the front of the mound. I see it. I remember. Yep. Mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is kind of like a maw. Yep for the mound but like i said i didn't want the traditional teeth i wanted something unusual right that you wouldn't expect <laughs> gotta be a, gotta have a little <laughs> something unexpected exactly but like scary and menacing I just continue around. And you can use a little bit little smaller ones to you know different a few different sizes fit in there. And you gotta play with it a bit because you know the it's gonna wanna lean forward until the hot glue dries, but it's pretty quick. The uh, the figure took longer to dry because you're using a lot the more hot glue you use. And it's a, you know this liquid hot magma pool mm -hmm. of hot glue. Mm -hmm. um, it it you know it takes longer to dry. So, but with a dab, it's pretty quick. And you get this cool kind of rotated. Circle like that. That's cool. Now That's super cool. Uh, what I did was. I just did the the, uh, the paper towel technique. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I just used toilet paper on it because the paper towels are too thick for this yep. something this small. So I just used toilet paper, and I have the finished one. So here's what the finished mm. one looks like. And see, it has those kind of ridges and everything in yep. it because I kind of squished. I kind of as this as this. Um, as this was got wet, I kind of pushed them in between the shells. Yep. So you get this really cool ridge, you know, uh, scalloped kind of look. And uh, yeah, I just thought that was really cool. So what I what I was going to do then was take the critter, and then I was going to put that on the front. So what I'm going <laughs> to do is, yeah, nice. I'm going to push it a little bit to fit. Yeah, you gotta break get get him in there. That stuff's hardened up pretty nicely right about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still have some flexibility with it. And then just put your hot glue on there. Well, that's uh hardening up a little bit. I'm gonna do some look in the maw. It'll be some It'll be like a certain – it'll be kind of a texture that's rotating out from the center. I'm just putting hot glue and dragging it out like a radiant – you know, like a sun or something. Yeah. Derek Ludwig and... is saying that Ma looks awesome, Scotty. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's looking really cool. So look how menacing <laughs> – you know, that's that's that freaking coming towards you. You know, that's <laughs> – oh, crap. Yeah, and it's big enough where it can swallow a player character, right? Our that'll, that'll make you pop your healing potions if you're not at full health. That's for sure. Dude. Dude. So that'll be like, okay. Dude. Yeah, that'll, that'll get you thinking there for a minute. Super so I just have cool. to hold that on so it, you know, it, uh, the hot glue. And you can go around and, you know, add some more hot glue. 
and then just kind of pull it, you know, pull the hot glue in and blend it in, blend it, just blend it right in. When you paint this, you won't be able to tell the difference. It'll just blend right blend in. Blend right in, huh? Yep, yep. Yeah. Hot glue is an amazing craft tool. Sure is. I, I, uh, I, I've used it before to, to, to model and sculpt with like, uh, I made a, a hollow tree stump just using hot glue. I think I used up <laughs> all like a ton of hot glue sticks, <laughs> but it looks the only thing that I find, and maybe you guys have a solution for this out there or, and Scotty too, but like, I don't feel it takes paint as well. Like once, if you just use it and then pr like you'd have to right. find a way to create those little, like, like when it gets just to the perfect temperature to run like a texture to texture it over so it can pick up dry brushing better. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I don't just, know. I mean, my, with, with that one, I, I know what you mean, but for me, the way I get around that is I, I just find that base um, doing another one or two coats and it will take the paint eventually. Does it? Okay. It does like, so, I mean, like just go back over the, the hot glue with another coat of your base Mod Podge or whatever. Okay. Um, it will eventually take the paint each I, time a little bit stays on and when it's dry. So, I mean, that's why I do it anyway. I'm going to yeah. have to try and, it. And depending if you're using spray paint primer, um, that can really make a difference as far as like sticking to the glue. Do you oh, think, yeah. I, I, and, that, and I guess that's, I have not used a spray paint before to, 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 as the base coat for it. So maybe is, I need, maybe that... I need to try that too. Uh, I like I like to because it's just quick and easy. It's yeah. just you know you you yep. know. Yep. Um, but you know there are considerations. You know, like in winter, you don't want to. You know, um, if you don't have a space to spray, it's tricky. Right. Um, if you know you don't want to breathe the fumes, so wear a mask. Yep. Uh, or make sure you do it outside. You know, it's not necessarily environmentally friendly, so that's not good too. But um, yeah, the the spray paint um, really can speed the process. And it, it, it tends to stick to the hot glue really well, the primer, so that, uh, yeah, you don't have any problem painting it. Nice. I don't know how paint-on primers would do, though. Uh, Michael, is that what you were talking about with when the multiple I, I coats? Mix, I mix blackboard paint with my Mod Podge, and mm -hmm. blackboard paint, um, I don't know if it's designed differently or whatever, but blackboard paint seems to stick to things really um so like i don't just use a uh, like like a regular black paint or black acrylic um it's like specifically blackboard paint oh okay and 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 it's really 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 black as well so yeah i have this black gesso that's you know for basically for priming canvases i bet that would work pretty good too it's mm. i like it because it's really black um you know i'll paint i'll paint certain things with it because i like the blackness of it and it sticks really well um, so I, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to test it on the hot glue. That's a, that's a great, it sounds very similar to the blackboard paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really, I also really like rattle cans. I, <laughs> I prefer to go to rattle cans for most things. Um, and the one thing that I really like about that is, uh, it, there are so many versions of primer. Um, yes, yes. That stick to metal that stick to different, different, uh, substances, so yeah. yeah you can you can get black primers you can get it in a, a medium gray you can get it in a, a, a sort of a, a burnt brownish red color so if you uh i like to pick my primer based on kind of like what my end result's going to be like I'll, I'll 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 use my dark red primer when i'm going into like woods and stuff mm -hmm. and it, it just you know gets me halfway there um and uh, Rust-Oleum. If, if, so, if you have like an FDM style three D printer, the the hot the robotic hot glue gun, not the resin one, right? And you're uh, and you're doing the layer upon layer thing. They also make uh, filler primers that uh, have just a little bit of body to them mm. that will take out a bunch of those layer lines. So, um, like, I'm all about the rattle cans. Oh, is it specifically filler primer, or is it oh, just yeah. it's thicker? Wow. It's a double it's coat. Called, it's called filler primer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'll super, have to check that out. Great stuff. Oh, there it is. And like yeah. it comes in gray. So most of my frost grave terrain is literally just a, a, a layer of filler primer and then going into black washes after that because I'm too lazy to like. Make <laughs> Where is your, Do you have any of that frost grave terrain handy? I want to see it. Oh, sure. Let me grab. I want to see it. Yeah, that'd be great to I see. see it. I want to see it. Um, I think I'm. Um, 
Daniel's love of spray cans is the sign of a misspent youth. <laughs> uh, funny story. I did spend uh, six months in a working at a paint department at Home Depot, and uh, I did in you get Los a Angeles, <laughs> yes, in, in in LA, and so I was taught to uh, to tag some very basic things on the counters with our our, our countertop cleaner because. The paint department in Los Angeles, Home Depot, apparently is just full of taggers or former taggers. Uh, oh, um, so, oh, yeah. wow, that looks great. So oh, it's just, yeah. it's just resin, it, not resin. It's just FDM printed, and the the filler primer just takes off just a little bit of that bump. Uh huh. Um, and you know, there's fantastic. My, I'll have to get some of that. You know, there's my red filament, and I just, I just hit it with the, the gray filler primer. Um, yeah, I use it. Um, you designed I, the building, I, Daniel. What's that? Did you design the building? No, th these are all uh, all available free on Thingiverse. Thingiverse is the place. Yeah. This is the jam. It is. Oh my gosh, that's yeah, great. But I use um, I use the 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 three D printer for props and stuff as well. And so, uh, if you're an Avatar: The Last Airbender fan, um, nice. Like this is a, this is a blue spirit mask my son wore for Halloween, and <laughs> uh, to like you can do all sorts of stuff with like Bondo and filler putty or whatever. But uh, the first few coats, if you just hit it with like uh, the Rust-Oleum filler primer and then do the sand down, uh, it saves just tons and tons of time on prep work. You can get really nice, smooth finishes. Wow, that looks great. No, that cool. looks great. Yeah, thanks. We told you, I gotta, Scotty. I gotta pick that up. I gotta pick that up. We told you at the beginning, Dan, Daniel's our resident. Um, what do we call it? I don't know. How do you even? How do you even say it? So it's it's hard to use nerd in this stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hard to use that one. Uh, but I know. I, it's I like, feel who like are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> me, me, you, you. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I know where you're going. Um. Well, and see, yeah, that's this is cool. Like again, I you know, it just even it, it's it's just the way the way it goes every week. Uh, that's why it's so cool for for uh, for oh, you guys to join the stream every week. Is every every week new information? Just like little, it's it's literally like uh, it's like gold mining. It's like panning for gold, Scotty. That like little nuggets are found every week through it. Let me see that. Let, let me see it, Michael. Let me see oh, it totally. again. I'm gonna start. I've bit, made a base for it as well. Yeah, look oh, at that nice. mount. That mount, <laughs> that's gonna be gnarly. That's gonna look really cool. Nice. I so am. It, oh, go ahead. It's go gonna ahead. be stone. Like I'm gonna paint this up like stone textured. Um, this is PIR foam that I've used a brush on just to get that texture. And then obviously I'm gonna make it looking like really grassy, but I want to just have him like aggressively binding up this hill. It's awesome. And like jumping out. You know, that's it. the that's the idea. That's freaking it. awesome. I love it. And that's a great uh, point of using the ter like the base as part of the model. The, the 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 model looks better because it's bounding up the hill. Right. Uh, right. Instead of just yeah, that's you can you you know don't feel don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to use something as innocuous as a base to actually add to the model itself. You know. Yep. 100%. Yep. I think it's all, sometimes can be a, a, a last thought, you know, what am I going to put it on? Um, but yeah, that's a great, um, I want to, I want to show you guys what I'm going to, I want to do tendrils for this, this beastie. Yeah. And I'm so I've got toilet paper here and I've just bent it over. So I'm going to, uh, spray it with my water and then I'm going to start in the corner of the two pieces and twist it okay okay and i'll keep twisting it and you see that it naturally forms a nice tendril because it's get it starts out really thin in the corner and then gets wider as you add the toilet paper mm -hmm. but what you can also do is if you can keep twisting it and then you get it starts to diminish again and get thin so you've got like it's kind of a two-sided ten tendril right or tentacle so what you can do is I just leave these together 
and then I can cut them in half where, where I want, you mm. know, when I use it. Yep. I like to make these and store them and then just use them when I need them. So, but that's not very interesting, right? It's just a straight <laughs> blah, blah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the white glue and s apply it on there, the 50-50 uh, solution, soak in there. And then I've got this plastic, you know, throwaway thing. I'm going to bend the bend this start bending this in interesting shapes like this and as you you can use the the container to hold it up and then when it dries you end up with you know an interesting weird you know like lashing around you know shape um so yeah and then i just make these so let me show you some that i've made yeah let's I see keep, i actually keep a box of these <laughs> <laughs> for just such occasions for just such occasions <laughs> <laughs> and so i've got you know some that are big i've got you know and you know all different sizes uh shapes tendrils for days on the stand yeah tendrils for days and so then i have these when i you know i have these when i need them for projects i use them a lot for roots for trees yeah they're great oh, for that yeah, yeah 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 so yeah and they're they're hard just like but the thing i like about the 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 you know the um, the the technique is that they're flexible too. Like if you hit it, it's not gonna it's gonna flex. It's not gonna break. If you hit a clay tendril like this thin, it's, it's gonna, gonna snap, snap off yeah. or it's gonna break yeah. most likely. This isn't. It won't break. <laughs> so yep. that's what's so great about these is that you don't have to worry about breakage. Yeah, so that's, I love that. that that tendril that tendril tutorial right there is is is, is a slice of fried gold for y'all out there. Now I love I love too. It's just I, I wish I man like dedicating more time to like it's nice just to sit down and like make a bunch of bricks or make a bunch of tendrils to have right, a stockpile right. on it because it really does. You want to think about like things that you can save up because then you could get up and while 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 this paper mache while while your uh, your mache is drying right you can get out the tendril and you can start painting part of it like you can you can uh -huh. um, you can it, it'll help expedite the uh, the process for the craft for sure I like oh that. yeah totally I love totally. it um I'll show you guys real quick I don't know if it'll show up here I'll try it uh, but I'll show you guys. Just real quick, I'm not. I want to show you the layering real quick, and it's good. Your brother's here. I uh, I can sh I can showcase off his suggestion. Um, on my shambling mound here, here you have the regular. Um, here you have the regular toilet paper and paper or paper towels rather that's on there. I don't know if you can see it. I think I can hold it up close. But after I layered the paper towel on there, I throw up some the cheesecloth on there for for added texture to paint up and it's gonna it's maybe a little bit hard to hard to see to the see right is there a great idea yeah I'm bradley like bradley it. that idea is really really cool and you're gonna see it on the other version when we when we paint up the one that's already dried and ready to rock i but i really really like that cheesecloth i also twisted it you can twist the cheesecloth uh, and and twist it up and then similar to the tendrils you just put the PVA uh, that PVA glue on there and it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, really 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 good as a, as a, as a vine twisted up um, but I really like it and the cool thing about I learned this too if you're working with the cheesecloth when you cut it it shreds into a separate layer so you can take this and you can pull it apart if you guys can see it in the back right around here but you can let me move this out of the way real quick and I'll show you guys. But you can save your cheesecloth and it get, you don't need a thick layer. But once you cut it, you can literally just pull it apart. And then you have a thinner layer of the cheesecloth to manipulate and work around. So I highly recommend if you've got some cheesecloth laying around, go for it. Like it adds it adds some really cool textures and you can make make uh, make some more more interesting snippets for your critter. Also, to add to that conversation, Dungeon Matron says, uh, by the way, use dryer sh uh, used dryer yes. sheets in a pinch if yes. you don't have cheesecloth. Yes. It smells good. So, <laughs> um, I, I, I think you you already commented on it, just like the, these nuggets of information that we get all the time. Yeah. I just like, like people are smart. I love, I love just like people say things and you're like, man. People are smart. So <laughs> that's awesome, Dungeon Matron. That's like that's a, that's really a really good cool tip. one. 
Yeah, that it, it is. It is. It's, it's 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 great. I thought about that too, um, and you know maybe I'll try that Dungeon Matron. I think because uh, uh, this will be the project after after the Sunday stream. It always is craft time with my son, and we bust out like typically we'll. Fail. Either work on what what we what I was working on in the stream, or he'll bust out something and try to make like copy that whatever we made on the stream. But I know for a fact he'll want a paper mache again today, so I'm gonna bust out dryer sheets and we'll try dryer sheets on it and add again something that's a slightly different texture that is going to just it's 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 gonna add another another layer of depth to the build. Uh, I love I'm all about that layering when it comes especially when it comes to um the the painting stage i also i also added some static grass to uh after it dried i added grass to it per suggestion this was this came from my buddy chris fort um who is another friend of the channel scotty and he he's a really good mini painter um and he was just like dude you should totally throw some static grass on there and then when you prime it it's gonna have some really cool like fuzz, create that fuzzy grass texture and boy oh boy did that work too so the more layer and depth of texture i can throw on a piece i am giddy with delight i love it totally totally um i'm gonna show you guys a trick Do it. uh that's really nice with the glue gun when the glue gun chamber gets to the point where you can't <clears throat> push any more glue through you'll see the end of the glue gun or you'll see the end of the glue stick you can take a little bit of teeny bit of glue looks like it ran out there take a little bit of glue and then glue it to the end of the other glue stick and it won't sometimes when you add a new glue stick it won't it won't pull it it won't grab it you have to, yep. you have to push it once you glue it to the other glue stick you're good to go it'll keep going now it's one it's become one glue stick that is perfect because um as you can see my my in absolutely terrible condition but mine glue the second one always goes off and is pushing the the yes. round circle that it's supposed to it's pushing <laughs> yeah, it off the wrong right angle the same thing. <laughs> right this right the same thing i am totally <laughs> pinching that tip i'm totally pinching that awesome, awesome awesome so now i'm kind of gluing um things to the to my critter i got a i got some um foam here uh just some of that uh uh, foam you use in the houses um and then i've got a piece of a 3d printed thing i put on the other hand these are going to be like kind of like clubs that the thing can use to batter <laughs> to batter its enemies with yep yep so um another thing i did which is uh, a fun thing uh let me get a blade here because i need to cut into into the piece okay so I made this, I like to save um, stir sticks from mm -hmm. your coffee joint that you get coffee. Yes. People throw them away. You like to yeah. save them? I like to acquire them. Save them. I like to acquire them when I go get coffee. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take them and I'll even <laughs> I'll even take people that throw them away. I'll just I'll just grab those yeah. too. Because um, yeah. sometimes I'll have a little trash can on the bar. Yeah. You just pull them out of there. No problem. Up. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so I thought this would be cool to have this broken board on the side of the creature so that players could climb up on it and actually models could sit on so it right cool so cool so i'm gonna kind of gouge into the piece with the knife love it and you can kind of like i said it, it's a bit malleable you can push it and you want to get you want to get them enough of a space where it, the the boards can stick the stir of the thing or have you know have a a precipice where they where they uh insert into it let's see so yeah so kind of like that and i'll just do the magic hot glue magic hot glue <laughs> Magma hot will burn your fist. <laughs> yeah. Don't let it, it burn is. your fist. It is very hot. Okay. So I did break the piece, so I'll have to glue that, re glue that. But, anyways, yeah, so now we got this piece right up by the head here where the clever player character can, you know, somehow get up there and start hacking on this thing. 
or if they get out of the maw, they can maybe climb up on this this broken board. That's so cool. I like I like the fact that you're you know it's, that's something again uh, that my uh, my buddy Chris uh, uh, so is <laughs> I've, I've spoiled rotten Scotty like my <laughs> my uh, my buddy one of uh, my um, party members from the D and D campaign I play with is my next door neighbor. Um, oh, that's that's yeah, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and uh, he's you know he's he's a uh, you know he's so he's always like you know giving me he offers some some great suggestions for for painting tabletop terrain but one of the things um uh oh my gosh it's i'm losing it now i'm losing that tangent it'll come back to me what did i was just what was i going to share oh it's gone that's that's a uh, what we'll, we'll call that i need more coffee brain good grief i forgot <laughs> where i was going with that tangent one of the things that i like about this platform i got my coffee here, <laughs> like one of the best things about this platform is that uh, it's it, it turns the thing also into a bit of terrain, you know what I mean? And it becomes like uh, like Chekhov's platform, right? <laughs> um, you, it may never occur to the players at all <laughs> that they could climb that thing and attack it. Right, right, you right, right. A platform sticking out there on the thing. Yeah, it, it's, I, it's like it's like. Describing the room and saying, and there's a low hanging chandelier. <laughs> right. <laughs> or they're going to cut the chain and drop it on somebody. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. I. And, and, and so, like, you. <laughs> if you put that platform on there, you're like, you're antagonizing your group. You know, you're, you're like, oh, it's like, I mean, right. you could you could shoot it with Eldritch Blast. From yeah. 300 feet away, you could. <laughs> you could. <laughs> you jumped on it and, I, st- and, and, and cut off the thingy. I don't. I just want to. I. It's it's 10 points to House Daniel for for incorporating Anton Chekhov into the live stream today. <laughs> yes. And yes, incorporating definitely. incorporating definitely. incorporating that and like an ama- because Danny is an amazing producer. He also helped remind me about what the heck I was I was talking about. Uh, That's which what was, I'm here for. I know, Pers- I I know, like that is that I I, I uh, you are you are clutch, sir. You are clutch. Uh, it, it's <laughs> it's it's. He reminded me. My buddy reminded me about having having playable scenarios where you know you can put the figures on it, which is what you're doing with your Scotty. I which is, always think about playability when I make terrain. Yeah, I it's something um, that I need that is to, as important to, to me it. as the aesthetics of the terrain. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. It's important to me too. I just need to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how is this going to work in the game? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. practically. Now, I didn't have the, um, I don't have another outhouse because uh, I put an outhouse on my other one that I Come finished. Come on. Come on. <laughs> No, but I do kidding. have this 3D kidding. printed fireplace, so I was going to add that. So I gouged the back out. <laughs> Wait a minute. You were like, oh, I don't have an outhouse, but I do have this 3D printed fireplace. I see what you did there. It's a little I'll bait put and that, switch. And since I gouged into it, it fits into the piece. It looks like it's actually stuck in the piece. Uh, see that? You guys see that there? So that's that's a nice trick. Oh, that's and then I so put, cool. I had this uh, cast gargoyle that I put on the top here too. So nice. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm a little bit shocked. I'm a little bit shocked. We have the tentacle box. We have the two. <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed. That we don't just have the outhouse box. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you know, and every once in a while, I just make 50 outhouses and I put them in two plastic stuff. <laughs> you never know when you might need another I guess outhouse. I never thought I would need two outhouses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't been on the Crazy Crafter live stream before where you do need two outhouses. No, it's that's perfect. Right. But you never, I, you never know. See, that's you, the perfect point. You never know. I love the fact that your, your backup is just like, but I do have this awesome brick fireplace. So here we go. That's <laughs> perfect. Yeah, so that's that's telling you, you know, if you don't have one thing to make something, if you're watching a craft and you don't have that thing, just substitute it or just, yeah. you know, add something else. That's just um, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Like I'm adding I, – I pre-did one that I base painted, and I'm, just, I'm adding, you know, different stuff to this one. This one has different objects that I'm putting on it. So uh, that's, you know, that's pretty cool that it's, it's actually going to look different than the other one. Nice. So I have, uh, I'm starting, you are, you are still, you are doing, you are killing it. I love how, 
Uh, you did it. Scotty. Scotty planned epically for for this stream today. He, <laughs> I did. He worked. I did. <laughs> he worked. He, well, he's got different stages. Just so you know, the level of 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 awesome and dedication he has for for all of you out there. He I was committed. He was committed, <laughs> and he's got all the different stages. Like he made so many variations of stage of the Shambling Mound to walk you guys through the step by step technique. So we really appreciate all that effort, Scotty, and of course you taking the time to join us today. This is, this is, uh, you know, all of the Sunday streams are an absolute treat and a joy just to, to be able to sit around and hang out and craft with, uh, with fine folks and friends is, is, is a joy, my friend. So thank you for joining us again today. Oh, very welcome. I'm so glad to be here guys. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I'm. I. I couldn't wait any longer. I'm starting. Oh, I don't. I don't know. You guys can see it a little bit. I'm. I'm starting to. I'm starting to paint mine because I couldn't wait any longer. I've been waiting. I've been waiting practically a whole week to start painting mine. So I'm starting to. <laughs> I'm shooting ahead because if I do if I paper mache the whole thing, my son will be very very. I will be paper macheing another shambling mound if I finish that other one. Because he's gonna be like, no 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 no. I'm I'm getting this house dirty today with glue and water everywhere. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Um, we well, have to let us know out there in in the. Uh, in the in the audience y'all are you guys crafting anything in particular today what are you all working on yeah seriously what are you working on if not a shambling mound please please let us know what else you're working on if you have any questions for scotty too this is a great opportunity throw some questions up there in the chat scotty said he'd love to to, to oh yeah any questions any questions you got put them up there put them up there great time to pick pick a the mind of a great crafter i'll babble away You'll babble. You'll babble just a titch. Yep, I'll babble away. You'll be able to babble through. Whatever you, think. whatever you want to know. Whatever you want to know. <laughs> yeah, this is great. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask you a question then. Then, uh, um, when, what age were you when you started actually playing D and D? Back in the olden days, um, uh, when I think I got like the red box, so I was like. Geez, I was like 18 or something oh, wow. <laughs> back then. So, yeah, that's when I started. Um, and then I I quickly expanded to other games like RuneQuest. And, you know, there were other other different um, games at the time. I really liked the uh, Chaosium systems, uh, like RuneQuest. And, um, What's the Chaosium system, Scotty? Um, it's... It's 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 basically the 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 closest thing today would would be Call of Cthulhu, the okay. game Call yeah. of Cthulhu. It's I based like on the Chaosium system gotcha. with the D hundred rolls. I see. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a it was like a D hundred roll system, and um, yeah, I liked it quite a bit. Um, I played some Rollmaster, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> And now I'm kind of at the opposite end of the spectrum as far as like complexity. Like I like simple mechanics um, because I like the mechanics to get out of the way of the storytelling in the game as much as possible. Yeah. Um, right. So I actually have my own system I'm working on called uh, uh, DM Scotty's Easy D6 system. <laughs> nice and the idea with the system is you never have to look up any rules oh everything you need to play is right on your character sheet oh you never have to go to any books all you have to learn is a few simple concepts and then you just play uh i've been using it at conventions before the plague and uh it's So quick it gets out of the way the system so quick it gets out of the way and lets the story flow nice and what happens is i get my groups worked up into a frenzy <laughs> and then i get in trouble because the other groups like Shh, they're telling us to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> they're telling us to be to settle down because we're getting they're getting, getting, getting them too, worked up, too excited the the um, scotty way yeah. is is a rowdy <laughs> is a rowdy uh format <laughs> right good good because you know i like to see i like to see that excitement uh, you know, in the players, and so I encourage it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not not so great for the other tables of the convention, but uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's it, it's it's I love it. It's it's fun. 
my actually believe it or not my hardest part of the system was to do magic uh. Uh, genres i haven't had a problem with because um you know if it's like spies okay you know you you might be a stealth character you might be a a combat character or whatever that's pretty straightforward right yep but think about spells there's so many variations on spells and how many spells you can have because i don't know if you guys are like me but i might look at a system and i'll look at the spell system and like well i don't like the spell system and if whether the rest of the game is fantastic or not i won't like the game mm. you know what i'm saying yeah like oh i don't want to play this because i don't like the spell system everything else is great about it but the spells suck so and it's not necessarily the spells themselves it's just maybe how the spell system works right mm -hmm. so that was my biggest problem was okay how do i do a spell system that's quick you know uh you don't have to keep looking up stuff but also has a couple things i like about a spell system one is like one is like pushing your luck you know like kind of if you if you want to push your luck you can push your luck um also if you just keep having bad luck there's a way to mitigate the bad luck mm-hmm you of course in my system you have to take you have to take a wound, which is you know you're it's a especially like you're burning yourself with a spell, but you get this you still get to cast a spell because nothing sucks more for a spell system where you have to roll than if you keep failing the roll, <laughs> right? Right. And if you really want to cast a spell and you fail to do it, you can still do it. You know what I'm saying? I love I like that. So I wanted to bring that to the system, but like okay, how do I bring that to a system that's so easy? that is not like a huge, you know, all these rules for it and, you know, spell slots and whatever spell PowerPoints and all this stuff that spell I didn't want to deal with, yep. you know, another yep. accounting, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to a game to be an accountant. I want to go to a game to have fun. So, um, you know, account gold <laughs> and count spell points and the spell slots and all this stuff. So I was like, how can I, how can I do this? You know, and still keep it simple. And then I had the I had the epiphany, and I came up with it. Uh, so I was so happy, and I kind of broke that. I kind of bro I finally broke the, the the wall as far as like getting the spell system that I wanted into the system. Because like I said, every other genre, I've done space. I've done you know normal people who ended up with a, like a minor superpower. You know, all kinds of different genres. I did pulp, but the spells were the hard were the hard one. That was the one that stumped me. Mm. And uh, because I didn't want people to have like with the other with the other genres I had, oh, you have a couple special abilities that you can do, you know, maybe, you know, telekinesis or something or whatever. I didn't want to have that with every spell kind of thing. You know, it was just it, it's just tricky. So I came up with a way to do it that, like I said, gave all the flavor that I like, but yep. just keeps it super simple. simple. No tracking, That's you know, cool. none of that. Um, Something that you could show crap. up on the day and just play. Exactly. Yeah. You can actually show up on the day and make a character in five to ten minutes and play. That's so funny. <laughs> you can make the character you want um, and play within ten minutes and be ready to go and never have to look up any rules. That's so cool. That's a cool um, system. So, yeah. So, I'm I'm super excited. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'm gonna start uh, working on it uh, as far as – I have a I have a site where I do modules called Quest Givers. Uh-huh. Um, and, um, Gareth from DMG info, who's another crafter yep. and I are very similar minded in our thinking about, about RPGs. And so we just, we got together and we did a Kickstarter for a campaign called the North road. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's a system agnostic adventure. So you can run it or system neutral. So you can run it for any system. You can run it for D and D you can run it for cypher system, oh, that's dungeon cool. world, that's anything. And the cool thing is, it's like it's 434 pages of con, and it does none of those pages are taken up with stats. It's not like wow. oh, there's 20 pages of monster stats or whatever. This is like all content, like you know, solid content, um, and all the modules are linked together in a campaign, so it's one whole huge campaign. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. And uh, when we did the when we did the we we had a successful Kickstarter. Here, I'll show you the book. Oh, we see. had a successful Kickstarter, uh, and here's the book. Oh, nice! Uh, so you can see it's it's thick. Thick, thick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks and, awesome. The book cover's cool as well. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. We wanted a really graphic. You know, we also have like we wanted this to be like a found, like game book that you loved, 
and we did like a style <laughs> that was reminiscent of like uh... the 80s or 90s. I've got terrain pictures in there. We've got art from you know Gareth and I have done. We've got um, uh, we've got coffee stains in the book. Like someone set oh, their coffee mug so cool. on it. We've got like pencil shavings. Um, <laughs> there's little notes, like stick it notes, where I give you like, oh, here's what I did, you know, in my game uh, advice. Good so, question. About um, that. Are you guys accepting late pledges on that? Is the is that still we, open? We are not, but we. We are retooling our website right now um, where you can get the book. Great. 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 So, Very cool. um, yeah, that should be up with, I think by the end of this, then by the end of next week, it should be up uh, where you can send actually me, get the book. Send me a link to that, Scotty, or if, let me know where the link is and I'll be sure to put that. We'll put that in the description here. I'll add that link to the description. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll definitely do that. And so um, we... Yeah, we were really, really happy with this. We're actually, we're actually working on another, another campaign, uh, like as large as this one. But yeah, this came out really fantastic. We were really happy with it. Um, I really like the style that it looks like an old found book. You know, it's like you went into, you went to an old gamer's house and found this yep. book on their shelf. That's, That's so kind of the look cool. we wanted for the book. So uh, yeah, we went with that. But with my, with my rules. The, the easy D six rules. What I want to do is kind of like you uh, found notebook. Like, you know, it's like there's pieces of paper. It looks like there's pieces of paper stuck in there and different notes scribbled for the rules. And, um, so it, it looks like a found, like a, like an old gamers found notebook, you know, um, I thought that would be fun for, for doing my easy D six rules, but, uh, yeah. Nice. I'm, uh, I'm excited to check that out. I look forward to one of these days when we end, um, when we end the uh, the plague and we're able to to resume in person play and traveling, I would I I look forward to meeting you at one of those con conventions and then also jumping into to trying out the module firsthand. I think that would be a ton of fun. That'd oh yeah, I've run it. Play. I've run it with uh, several groups and then we've just we've just all had fun with it. Yeah. Um, actually, um, Lisa, the dungeon matron, who's in the, who's in the chat, yep, yep. uh, she's playing in one of my groups. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah. So she has a character in one of my, in one of my groups. Oh, fun. That's fun. Yeah. You have to let us yeah. know. Uh, uh, well, I'm sure she's, she's playing, but you have to let us know dungeon matron. Uh, how, how are you enjoying the module? Put it in the, com uh, in the, in the, in the chat there. Let us know how, how that's coming. And what is your. It, uh, what what player or like what's your what what is your race class like? Tell us what you're playing in the campaign. You have to tell us. Yeah, I'll I'll let her do that. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun stuff. And we also do we also have a Quest Givers YouTube channel, so we do like advice videos and stuff. Oh, cool. They're more they're more system neutral than most uh, videos because you know we're we want you know I think a good advice is good for any game. Sure. Yeah. So it's uh, it's. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think, um, uh, those it, it's, it's a great, it's a great channel. Like I think having the resources for gamers and DM specifically and folks running games, super helpful. Uh, cause they're the, it can be overwhelming. Like I know for a fact, like, um, like if I were to get into Warhammer, that's what I would want. Like first off, you know what I mean? Like I want, right. I want to lay down all the rules, um, like I, I want, I want to be able to to have everything spelled out clearly for me, and uh, it's such a it's such a great resource for for everyone who is out there wanting to get into new tabletop and try try uh, try new games. It's awesome. It's really really cool. Totally totally. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I'll show you. I, here I am. Dry brush. Dry brushing. I'm. I've just got nice. one layer of dry brush down, <laughs> but I am digging digging this 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 meaty beefy beefy mound i really really like uh all the highlights you, you can see up on here uh it's it's popping it's cool where um where we're at where are you at right now scotty where are you at with yours i'm uh putting a bunch of stuff in it cool um I got a fireplace, you know, uh, <laughs> bricks, I got an uh, arch, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh my uh, this is 3d printed. I've got stuff that's cast 3d printed. The boards are coffee stirs. So it's just whatever out of my junk box and you know, whatever you have, you can use, um, you know, in this kind of thing. Nice. But I thought what I would do is we're, we're getting, we're getting far into the stream here, aren't we? We are. Um, 
again, like I, t- <laughs> like I told you before, it is, uh, we, we, we go, it's two hours. Ha ha. Uh, and we always kind of <laughs> chuck with that. We can bleed. We can bleed over Scotty. Um, there's, there's, uh, we've got, we've got some, some extra time. So I definitely feel like we have time to, um, craft a little bit more and then start layering in a little bit of paint and get to show off where you got with, uh, kind of like not the completely finished product, but we Mm -hmm. have, we have time, brother. We have time. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, um, another thing, another resource I used for my dude is, um, these train trees and they come like this. They're kind of like flat. Um, but you can you can bend these things all out of shape like this, and they'll stay. Mm-hmm. And these are great for um, you know you could have these in ruins or like what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick them actually stick them in this thing. Yep. And they have all different sizes from this size to like itty bitty just like branches uh, to medium size you know smaller a little bit bigger. Uh, so that that's what's nice about these they have all these different sizes of uh, trees and then um, I thought for let's see Um, oh yeah 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 okay um, I got these two these um, handles off of paper bags (laughs) perfect so I use these as vines to wrap around the critter. So just like what I did was I poked a hole in it, put the put the this in, wrapped it around, you know, tag glued it with a hot glue gun, wrapped it around, you know, the the beastie, and you get these nice vine look, right? Yep. So those are those are easy. And then what I also did was for texture on the beastie. I, I'm really nice at work, and I empty out the pencil sharpeners. Oh, so nice! So I use pencil shavings, <laughs> and I I soak them in white glue, the 50/50 glue, white glue water, and then just start clumping it on the beast. Or you can clump them on ruins. Or what I like about the pencil shavings is they don't come off like static grass, like. Probably at some point, static grass is going to come off. It's going to come off. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you're going to have a box with a bunch of static grass on the bottom. Yep. yep. This will not come off because it's soaked in white glue and it's solidified on the surface. So you can use this for moss, grass, anything. Hmm. You could even buy a pencil sharpener and sharpen up. You know, get dowels and sharpen them up. I think. I, I guess dowels would work if you had the right size dowel or even just pencils. Yep. But um, yeah, this stuff is great and it's. It has, it's nice because it has a little bit of length to it. You know what I'm saying? It's yep. not just sawdust. It's you can use sawdust. That's another alternative. But I particularly like pencil shavings because they have a little bit of length to them. So, I'm gonna show you guys um, the the finished dude. Okay. Uh, I've got him base painted. He's not totally finished. Let's check him out. But let me show you this guy. All right. So. So here he is. <laughs> um, so here are those tendrils I was talking about. Uh, the tree things I was talking about. There's mm-hmm. that maw with the, the shell teeth. Uh, the base we did. Dude. This one's got, here's the outhouse stuck on the back. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> <The> statue. Um, <laughs> I've got the board here where the players can stand on and, you know, beat on this guy. Um, I actually did for the feet, I did like chunks of st- polystyrene so that, um, and I, then I glued him to the st- the polystyrene and put like some tendrils coming down. So it's like, he can stomp, a, you know, like he's got stone feet essentially. And so, uh, that's dangerous. So yeah, that's, um, that's the whole completed thing with all the stuff. You can't really see the, the grass very well because, um, it's all painted the, the green color, but yep, yeah, yeah, dude, that's looking epic, Scotty. I the maw, all those details that you, uh, as far just you know, this this goes back to our conversation um, 
when we first started to, uh, ch- chatting about what about the build this week, and I absolutely love you your idea of the shambling town, right? That's just consuming everything. You have, mm. you've you've uh, you've added all those components in, and it it looks it looks absolutely terrifying. Oh, and you know, so cool. You know, with the with the you know talking about playability, you got the the board that people can stand on. I've got the tendrils here. You could actually hang player miniatures from these tendrils, right? Put it through their legs on the miniature. Yeah. And they so it's like they're grabbed. Oh yeah, they, they're just grappling them. <laughs> you I could love probably it. put you could fit them in the mouth oh, in the maw so of the cool. mouth. Um, <laughs> there's so many things that you could if somebody's climbing up, you can grab on because I've got these little branches everywhere. You could like put the miniature on that. Um, so yeah, you there's plenty of places that you could actually stash miniatures on here. Love it. Um, as they try to scale, if they try to scale this thing. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. I'll be back in a second. I just need to wash my hands. Wash, oh yes. Wash your hands, friend. Um, oh yes. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. We've got a bunch of photos. Uh, are you okay, Scott? Uh, Scott, if we take a second and to take a look at some of the the works in progress from this week. Oh yes, please. You'll be able to see see them see them up there. Um, uh, as it yeah. pops up a little, a bit, little delayed. bit of delay, and then you'll be able to see them. You'll up be on able YouTube. to see them up on YouTube there. Um, but we're going to go over. Um, for those of you that um, are are just tuning in and haven't, uh, well, those of you that have been tuning in as well for for the live stream week before, it's been kind of like send me your pictures, email them, put them in this Facebook group chat, and thank goodness uh, I've connected with uh, Josh Matkin over at the Pickle Jar um, uh, and the Chilling War Gamers Network. Um, and I stole this from uh, from uh, from Josh. Josh always shares on his stream, Scotty. Um, mm-hmm. He always has he has a Facebook group, and I was like, oh, what a great great idea for the community to share. I'm still working on creating that group, but since one of uh, one of uh, our audience members, Sondor, has created this lovely Discord, we can pop right on over to our Discord here. And Whoa. we can check out these cool, new, amazing builds from this week. Um, so we'll start here with Carl um, to share. To share. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. This is cool. This is the beginning of a beholder. It's coming up here in just a second, I think, for everyone. Um, but this is absolutely fantastic. He's got a really, really cool, uh, a really cool build uh, here for for this for this guy. How do I get out of that? Oh, that's cool. And the holders are great because they're so alien that no one's gonna say, "Oh, that doesn't look." <laughs> yeah, know what I'm right. The proportions on that aren't right. The you proportions know? on that aren't right. No, not at all. <laughs> like, so here you can see he's got he's starting to get some of those those uh, tentacles drawn. And Carl does a lot of really cool sculpting. If you haven't seen Carl uh, Carl's channel, uh, Carl makes stuff. He's got a bunch of really cool tutorials and builds. Everything from miniature painting to eyes. I need to go watch all. Oh, I don't know if you're like me, Scotty, but man, I can't paint eyes to save my life yet. I need to work on it. Um, but it's just a great, it's a great channel. It's a great channel. It's to, tricky. Uh, it's tricky. It is tricky for me. So that's yeah. a really cool beholder. Thank you for sharing that, Carl. So that's can great. um just, I don't know if Carl's watching, but if Carl is watching, it'd be cool to know what he's using to sculpt that. Yeah. What are you using to sculpt that, brother? That's a great question. If I remember correctly, he said that he was going to have to watch it after the facts. Yep. So. Oh, who's this knucklehead? Let's look at this guy. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. This is from your video uh, build inspired by... Uh, by Tina Martins. Um, this is a really cool magnetic board, Scotty. So this this board, nice. um, this board that's uh, popping up right now is laid out on a dry erase board that Michael used, and he put uh, magnets. It's a magnetized board, so he covered it with the tiles. But then once you um, you finish the board down, then all of your little scatter terrain that comes along here magnets on the bottom, and you can basically build and assemble your own uh, your own encounter so you can populate it with whatever whatever details you want whether that's a hallway whether it's a kitchen a bedroom this is real this is a really cool video and a really cool concept that uh that tina martin's designed that michael built on his channel this week this is really cool guys that's awesome yeah. This looks really good. Super fun to build as well and not that hard. Yeah. And also, well, you got to sculpt a monster this this past week too, brother, because you stepped Scott Michael stepped on his bookshelf that he made here, Scotty, and he crunched it and oh, like accidental, so he's like, "Well, 
uh dude these little desks and the books everything all these details looks great michael um do Thank we you. do we have a picture of the mimic i don't think we have anyway he turned the oh, crust one into a mimic and he sculpted and crafted it into <laughs> cool. a mimic so uh, it it is not destroyed it is merely a new a new opportunity uh to create something else look at this dude this this is uh one, another one of our viewers and a guest he's been a fellow crafter on the stream before He's built this entire series of Spanish, uh, a Spanish style villi- uh, architecture for his D and D campaign. So when they do meet in person, he's got like five or six of these buildings, Scott, and he does like individual terracotta cool. like uh, uh, shingles on it. This is looking great, Derek. Uh, you guys have to come over to the Discord server. I'll put a link to the Discord server in the in the stream today as well. Uh, if you haven't joined the Crazy Crafter Discord, head on over there. Uh, and and check us out oh my goodness um <laughs> tina has has posted tina is crafting with us it is the evening in belgium she is crafting with some wine at hand well done tina well done <laughs> and here oh here it is here is zane's door build that he's painted up oh my gosh this thing looks insane all the detail that he's created on this from the stl uh, design looks fantastic. This is going to be an epic, epic build. Like, oh, look at all the detail from the little bus on the on the upper right hand corner. This is fantastic, Zane. This looks really cool. We keep encouraging Zane Scotty to open up like an Etsy to start selling all his STL designs because he's such oh totally such yeah. a talented designer. Uh, yeah, he should. Here's Tina's. Tina is working on a minds of the minds of Moria build right now. She's got some epic dwarven pillars up here kind of her works in progress oh my god tina this looks so good this looks so good tina amy root's probably wondering where's all the glitter there's not enough glitter on this <laughs> i need more glitter on this oh yes look at that that she's using the kind of the granulated styrofoam there carving it out for some damage texture these embossers she's using some embosser stamps to create some of these really cool cool designs tina this is absolutely i think that's great. that's actually regular xps it's just white xps it's not um right. the beaded star it's not, oh it's not the beaded star from it's just the white xps yeah. i see i see well this is looking fantastic oh man tina this is looking cool there's so many cool stuff in here all this is looking really good all the stonework and texture is great look at that oh yes so many epic builds this is really cool y'all i'm i'm uh i'm digging i'm digging the the disco oh yeah there you go there's gandalf gandalf uh wandering wandering in through the mines of moria there with uh looks like gimli perhaps behind here i like that bravo um oh my goodness we got more here look at this tina tina's got another one um this is from she said this is when the first uh one of her first projects from uh from dm's craft here scotty inspired by you oh, this, awesome. look, this is uh this is uh, one of the entrants tina's tina is an amazing amazing crafter who i'm just we're constantly she's constantly sharing her ideas with us all the time and we're we're blown away by by the techniques that she's she's put together and used and here's the finished pr- product of of inspired her her dm's craft inspired build right here this is great oh, awesome. awesome she's got those those module <laughs> modular uh modular floor tiles this entrance, uh-huh. this 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 gate here, this looks so cool. She she she's just put some comments in. She said, uh, "No, the back is still the beaded foam. Oh, is and it, it needs to be covered." And then um, this one was specially for Scotty. This build. Oh, oh thank you. Super cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you Wonderful. for sharing it, Tina. Sonder, yes, our you. Discord guru. Check this out. Oh, yeah, he's doing some modular stone ruins here. These are looking good, brother. I think those are some of my favorite. Like Scotty said before, something that is scatter terrain based that you can you can throw down and utilize over and over again, these little modular brick walls are going to get used a lot. So you're, you're going to get some mileage out of these. These are looking good, brother. Those are looking oh, good. Oh, totally, totally. Boom! Those are looking so cool. Um... Those are fantastic. I'm gonna let it catch up there for a second and make sure that uh, I don't I don't cut it off. I should be able to come back now. Uh, thank you all for sharing it in the Discord um, of all your works in progress. That is absolutely fantastic. 
I love the fact that we have a nice way to showcase and share all your work now. Thank you, Josh Mackin, for letting me, uh, for, for, <laughs> for inspiring me to steal your cool idea and how to share it. Um, and uh, as always, if you haven't joined, join the, the Discord. We'll be sure to uh, join that link. Michael's got a Discord set up now, too, uh, for, for Nat1 videos. Join that as well. We're always posting and sharing our work in there. It's a great, it's a great, uh, it's an yet another place to share, share inspiration ideas for the craft. All right. Back to this this shambling town that is going to <laughs> ravage your party members here uh, one day, Scotty. What is the next step for you? Like, what are you? Um, I see you. you are you are you starting to, to add in some highlights now? Yeah, I'm starting to add some paint to it. Cool. So, um, yeah, doing just doing some dry brushing. I'm not that worried about you know getting it on, um, you know, the piece itself because I can just you know cover it over. You know, and it's something like this. It's such a mess anyway. It's so conglommed together and all the stuff, you know, if you get a little bit of gray on it, it's not going to matter. You know, it's not going to be like, no one's going to be like, oh, you know, it's like, like a miniature where if you, you know, you, you, you make a big, you know, get too much on the other part, it's going to look funny. Mm -hmm. Something like this. You can just don't, don't worry too much about it. Don't, don't sweat that every little detail has to be like, like you make your player character, you know, just go to town. Just, I, you know, I just go crazy on this stuff. Um, and I, you know, I, I, you know, my techniques have, 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 uh, have evolved to a point where, you know, I like to craft quickly, you know, I yep. like to do, uh, I like to do quickly because then I can work on more stuff for the game. <laughs> yep. 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 The quicker I work, the more, so the more crap I can have for the table. So. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, that's looking, that's looking mighty mean. What it, um, so you um are you you haven't thrown a wash on that will you wash it too scotty i i am going to yeah. um and what i want to do is uh i kind of want to do the other stuff with with more of a matte wash yep but the creature itself what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this is going to seem a bit weird um let's see if i can find it here i've got it somewhere I have to wait for my clay to dry, uh, dry <laughs> so I can just sit and what monitor the chat out. for a little bit. Yep. Here it is. Yeah. I'm going to use pledge. <laughs> you can use pledge? <laughs> I'm going to use pledge. I'm going to put pledge in a little cup, and then I'm going to use like a cocoa brown huh. and a little bit of black. Um, so it'll be a dark brown, a little bit of black. And then I'll wash the creature with it, and it'll give it a bit of a glossy look. Yeah, Pledge is a classic. It's oh, a great that's, one. I never even thought about that. Yeah. Pledge yeah. is rad. Yeah. It's shines. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Not a paid advertisement. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> so the pledge, so you, like, how much pledge do you put in there, Scotty? Uh, I just use, um, like with a small cup like this or whatever, I just use, you know, I'll put like half a cup of it in there, all pledge, and then just put the paint right in with the pledge. Lovely. No water, no anything else. Lovely. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And it, it, you know, easy and it works nice and it gives a nice glossy look to something. Oh my goodness. That is, that's, wash. that's brilliant. I have never, again, th uh, there's, there were, uh, <laughs> for, for, for pan and for gold on today's stream, we've hit, we've certainly hit the, the mother load. Uh, we're, we're getting all, all the, the, the juicy tidbits, things that I haven't, haven't used before. Again, all things I'm like, where's the pledge, honey? I need the pledge. She's going to get excited. <laughs> She's going to think I'm going to start cleaning. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, I'm cleaning. That's what I'm doing. Can I have the pledge? Bye. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And you know, a uh, dry brush is always that. Have one color on it, and you dry brush. Yeah. You start to get all that texture. Yep. You can see, you know, the 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 glue gun texture on there because yep. um, I kind of dragged it out like it was like almost like roots were holding things into place. Yep. Um, you know, the texture of the toilet paper, the texture of the, of the pencil shavings, so you're getting all this delicious, delicious tech, like it's exactly just yummy, yummy, culture. delicious texture popping out. 
I think uh, that's what I'm going to do real quick here with uh, with mine that I haven't done yet. I'm going to go back in with a couple different um, layers for the dry brush here as well. I'm going to do I'm going to try doing a darker green now that I hit up with a lighter green and see see if I can darken up a couple of places on the under under like especially underneath where there's no light. Let's see yeah. or less light rather. Kind of hit up some some darker areas for that shading, but that's going to be that's going to be super fun. Maybe I hit up these. Hold, it. Hold up to the camera there a minute, Colin. Just a little bit back and down. Yeah, there we go. That's that's looking really good, man. Thanks, brother. Coming along. It's that's it's, definitely a shambling mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's not uh, what the other one was looking like at the beginning of the stream. That's for sure. Dungeon matron uh, called out that my my shambling mount is, is is looking a little bit odd and uh so uh full disclosure i am doing things that i did not plan on doing or <laughs> did not prep materials for um i had uh, attempted to make i watched one two minute long uh, youtube tutorial on how to make paper mache clay uh five days ago and i was like i feel like i remember it well enough and uh, <laughs> and it was bad and uh so so then i i just happened to have a bunch of like dollar store like uh reindeer moss yes and, mm -hmm. yes uh, and i've got Perfect. uh jute twine and i've got various things and i've i've actually now made three shambling things just using my uh my pipe cleaners hot glue and uh sort of that stuff so i started with a a shambling man right like <laughs> awesome the, awesome the classic shambling thing and then um dungeon matron said that i should do a a, a shambling poodle <laughs> awesome. i have in fact a shambling poodle i i'm pretty proud of the fact that he has cute little pointy ears <laughs> it looks slightly it. it does look slightly dragon-esque as well in the yeah. head shape it looks oh, oh yeah it does actually yeah, yeah he'll get you so um and then i i kept trying to figure out ways to use the jute twine and i wasn't happy with any way that it turned out in the thing and so i made a a uh it's gonna be hard to show up but i made a flying shambling creature where i made wings and the jute twine is coming out the back and then I have this sort of uh, really tenderly stuff that I, I made a monstrosity where it sort of comes out the face of that so that... Dude. Um, dude. Because the whole thing with the shambling things is that they grapple stuff. So imagine yes, like this thing right. goes, and like grabbing, <laughs> you know, grabbing somebody with its, 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 its face and then swooping them up into the trees. So. I, it, I need to go back and capture the just as a soundbite to replay as an ad, like as a soundbite on the on the stream that's it needs to be my intro and it's like joining us as always is michael patterson from not, not one videos and daniel west <laughs> yep, yep, um, from his garage <laughs> yeah. that's uh, thing for sure i uh i'm 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 digging i'm digging uh i'm digging all of those daniel those look fantastic i i again uh, over overwhelmed by by the uh, the tenacity that you show in, in in like not just one thing but three different things uh, today. I love it. Pushing pushing the bar, my friend. Pushing the bar. Three little things. You guys have me on 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 uh, scope. That's I all. Think. That's there's going big. it's it's all like that's 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 what's so fun about it. It can come up with different different uh, different size, different scale. Um, we're anxious to see if you guys come up with anything on uh, on your own, and you, as if you build a shambling mound later on. I know one of our one of our uh, uh, audience members say Derek Ludwig. He's he's gonna he said he'd share it later in the week, Scotty. So we'll make sure when uh, okay. when that gets when that gets uh, posted and shared, I'll be sure to tag you on that so you can check out his build as well. Yeah, it'd be, please. It'd be super cool. There is something else I want to show you guys yeah. that is a great resource um for crafting okay um and it works with stuff like this alien stuff uh weird creatures that kind of thing okay so here's the mound um now i have this here this piece okay see that isn't that cool now i could put this in the mouth 
And then I've got like these tendrils coming out of the mouth. That's cool. Uh, pretty cool, huh? That's super now, where cool. did I get that? I'll show you. Well, I'll show you. Well, I'll show you. <laughs> you ask, I'll show you. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Demogorgon from Stranger Things a little bit. Yes, yeah, exactly. It is It is definitely challenged, uh, channeling that. And like that thing, I don't even have to paint. It's got a two-tone color. It's really nice. It has kind of a glossy because it's plastic. And you know where I got it from? Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree Flowers. Very cool. Okay, so, look, so cool. watch this. Okay, so I'll take a flower off. All right. I'll pop this stamen or whatever out of the center. And there you go. You got a piece. <gasps> oh, look at that crazy wow, These thing. flowers are great. Here, let me show you this too. Okay, so this, pretty innocuous. You know, it's just this flower, right? But yep. watch this. I take this off. I take the flower off. I pop this off the back of the flower, if I can. And you got this really cool grabber mouth type Ooh. thing, right? <laughs> now, if you get other pieces, like you could even take this piece, put it into this piece, and now you got, look at that. You got kind of a grabber <gasps> oh, mouth with like, things coming out of yeah, it. Yeah, you could that, that could be like shooting out of the hand of the shambling mouth. Like, ah, exactly. like I grab yeah. me with that. Yeah. Oh, I am so yeah. using that. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> But it's, that's just that's really cool scatter terrain for like fauna that's like attacking people or totally totally. Ah. And I then you it. you know you can pull you can get littler ones pull them off the the plant, and then you could actually when you put when you strip the plant itself you could actually use the plant because it has a wire in the oh my God. it has a wire in the plant so you could you could put these little sucker mouths on the end of the plant. That's so. And then cool. you got you can bend it in any way you want you know like that and have a, you know cut them off or you just use the plant as is and stick it in something and you got you suddenly got a, a, a you know a tentacle creature Dude. um or a, you spend uh, a dollar on excited. i'm super excited i'm super excited my plant. brother left the the stream early because now he doesn't know the the form of his destructor right brother's character with that wonderful, wonderful, horrible monster thing you just... Yep, yep. <laughs> choose, choose the form of the Destructor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love that, Scotty. That's that's a really... See, that's what's so cool about, about um, I, you know, getting... I love I love that creative component for for the craft, too, is just finding all sorts of different different exciting um, materials to, to utilize and, and work with. I always dig whenever you throw up, um, uh, you know, pictures either on the Tabletop Crafters Guild or, you know, the video you released a, a little while back uh, about just creating, like, sci-fi scatter, like some some quick and easy scatter terrain. Like oh, yeah. That, mm -hmm. that little things like that that populate the table uh, quickly add so much to that immersive environment for – for everyone playing in the tabletop, and I, I, I am, I am, I am sad. I just went to the, to, <laughs> to the crafting store and the dollar store this week because I'm like, <laughs> I want to go back and look for things to, to, to grapple my players with. Oh. So here, I want to, I want to show you something I did with it. Um, I had an alien. I was doing a kind of a Buck Rogers esque, um, rocket patrol thing, which was yep. really fun. Yep. Uh, I, so I had these kind of plants in the landscape and, you know, of course they don't do anything until the players get near the, you know, until the players are in a bad situation. Um, and then suddenly they come to life. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. They're just terrain Surprise! until the point when the players get in a bad situation. <laughs> so here's, here's, here's what I did. So I, I, uh, did a stump with method, right? Yep. I got this. These are just dollar store plants. So that sits that sits on the surface, right? And then when it attacked, I have this this thing <laughs> opens up and these are these are basically this is hot glue. The thing in the center is from the plant. These teeth are just tines from a plastic fork. And I just hot glued them into the circle of hot glue there, painted it that, you know, icky red 
color. Love it. And so this, 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 you take this off the table and then it's this, right? <laughs> like, and not only uh, that. I inspect the pretty flower. I smell it. <laughs> Oops. And not only that, like more tendrils come out of the table. So I've got, um, I've got, you know, the, the, the pieces I pulled off the plant, like those sucker mouths. There you go. Oh so you have gosh. these, you know, suddenly pop out. You know, you got you maybe got four of these come out, you know, and then the players are surrounded. <laughs> and then the tendrils are trying to throw them into the mouth, you know, throw them into the mouth. Oh, I love that. So, That's a great. Yeah, and these are just those those plastic plant pieces, you know. I think you I think you've inspired me, Scotty, to like go back and like just build an entire encount like section of like literally an entire counter where you go to like some jungly crazy area where actually Ah oh, man, like we keep progressing through our players' backstories, and one of our players comes from a heavily wooded, dense forest, jungly area um, oh, yeah. in the world. And I'm like, oh, please don't get to that area of the campaign just yet. Like, I want to wait till we get back in person. So that's like a perfect area for all of this to for our for our DM to ambush us and kill us all with. It's great, <laughs> totally. Uh, and I love using stuff like that on the table that looks doesn't look deadly, yeah. but then suddenly be can become deadly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, you trick you trick them with something that, you know, they've passed it through the whole game, and then suddenly they pass it, and then you know, it comes to life. Uh, so <laughs> that's always fun, yep. and you can use terrain to trick people that way, yep. because, you know, as much as you can use like the narrative to trick people, right. Yep. Um, that they don't think something's dangerous and then suddenly it is the same thing with terrain. If you get them used to seeing something, um, then, you know, it, it doesn't become dangerous. Like I had with that, with that space thing, I had these little rocks, um, just scattered around the surface. Right. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly when they were in trouble, uh, some of these rocks like sprouted like spi they were like basically like hermit crabs and these spider things came out of them and they had they wore the rock as like a shell like a hermit crab and then the spider things like attacked them you know because they were they were vulnerable or close or whatever so um the whole game they were just rocks they nice. weren't anything but rocks you know nobody gave them a second thought <laughs> and then you know um they suddenly come to life so that's you can trick people with terrain that way you can put things on the board. You can put things down that they think is just not dangerous. It's it, essentially, it's I guess it would be the, the um, the mimic trick. You know, right. um, where so I've, I've got a question for you, Scotty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how does one become a member of uh, one of your games? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just want to play. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have so much fun. Um, and uh you know i do full terrain games uh you know um like i said my daughter you know sometimes will help me if not it's my wife she'll be like you know hand it, like i'll have them hand me stuff so it's like so you know so like oh we gotta shut down and you know you gotta wait here for 10 minutes while i set up the terrain i've got it to the point where it's like flows so easily you know um that it's usually not a problem and what i'll do is maybe if i have to like a major scene change or something i'll like oh let's take a 10 minute break you guys go you know go to the restroom or whatever and you come back and it's all set up you know so <laughs> how many how many how many groups do you play um dm for is it do you have one main group or do you like mm. dm for a lot of groups yeah that's a good question um right well when before the plague i had two uh two groups i was running at home and then i run a lot of games at conventions so um, I, it's mostly East Co it's mostly uh, East Coast, but I have gone to a couple of conventions on the on the West Coast. One I went to was it was actually a, I was surprised they invited me because it was a war game convention, mm. and but more people wanted to play RPGs. So uh, Miranda, who's the war gamer girl, she oh. invited all. And you go to this lodge, uh, the, the largest privately owned lodge in the United States. It's like above Salt Lake City in the mountains. Mm. And it was it was totally you stay there a week and you just game. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So I'm that awesome. was amazing because I just ran a short campaign through the whole time. Like and it was like I've never got to do that. You know, like when I play with my own groups, it's like we meet like once a month or whatever. Um, 
So, you know, I never got to sit down and play back to back. Like I did a short campaign and it was so awesome because it was all fresh in everybody's memory. And it's like, okay, what did we do last time? You know, kind of thing. And um, it was like, uh, it was so fun. Miranda, it was so fun. I love that. Miranda is fantastic too. If, if anybody's interested in, in skirmish style games, she really has some of the best uh, War Machine, uh, mm. War Machine um, battle reports, like on the internet. Uh, and I, I wish I could get a game of War Machine around me because I've got several little minis. All of my, uh, all of my crafts that I put on the channel get uh, demoed with a War Machine figure. I use Coleman Striker for all of them, and she, oh, nice. uh, she has some of the best uh, battle reports for that. Super well crafted. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, she, she's a wonderful person. And, uh, you know, we were going to have this last year, it was going to be the first year of Nerdarchy Con and all these people were, co I mean, it was oh. like, everybody was coming, you know, it was going to be so great. And I was so excited for it. And then, it, you know, COVID. Um, but yeah. Well, th that's the cool thing. Eventually, you know, we'll be, we'll be able to travel to the conventions again. And it's, I'm looking forward to, to that day when you know we can we can uh connect connect again and be able to to share a space because uh you know let who would say dungeon matron saying la needs the craft father i couldn't agree more <laughs> that would be amazing what's the big one you guys all did a, a really cool um all the the major um you know the guild masters from the tabletop crafters group did videos last year it was the was the was the tabletop crafters convention in north carolina last year is that where it was where you guys you guys all did like individual videos is that was that was that in north carolina and tell what is that convention i want to know a little bit more about that because that is something that when this pandemic is over i am i am 1000 percent making a trip to that when it happens i, I go there every year and Dude. the only years i haven't gone are are because of covid wow. but it's actually it's actually a pretty small well, convention is it um and they do I think they do three a year. I go to the one that's in Asheville because oh, my daughter nice. lives in Asheville, North Carolina. Nice. And, it's, nice. and that's, that's about 500, 400, 500 people. But their main one is about 1,000 people. So it's not big. Oh. But it's just this cozy little convention that everybody knows everybody. And yep. it's just um, so great. And so they invited me one year. And um, it worked out so well that you know we started inviting other crafters to come. And it nice. just kind of became – where the crafters were going, you know, it's not a big craft. It's not a big convention or anything. It's just a small little, little convention, but um, yeah, all the crafters, you know, go there. And I, I, you know, I always run games there, full terrain games. And so if you guys, it's called mace. So if mace. you guys can, yeah, yeah. I would, um, I mean, if you guys can go. That'd be great. That be sounds, great. that sounds like something that's begging to be live streamed. Uh, it does. Uh, with, yeah. Uh, it does. With, uh, with a bunch of really cool guests and folks coming on. I, I mm -hmm. think that would be it would just be a ton of fun and also just to just go connect with in person with other members from the hobby. I think that would be it just a ton. I watched the video and I was just like, man, the first thought I was like, I want to go next year. Like I want to go. And then COVID is like, no, yeah. you're going to sit tight yeah. for a while. But yeah. I um, uh, that's it's good to know. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled at that possibility. It sounds like um, I don't know. I hope you get your passport ready, brother, because you're gonna have to come too. So, oh yeah, you know, and it's like yeah, the the crafters, the craft, you know, a lot of crafters go there, so it's great. Because like last year, that last year where you're talking about the videos, yeah, where um, everyone posted, they made their own videos. It was videos. so it was much so fun. Cool. It was so, so cool. it was so much fun. So many people, uh, like you were talking about Frankie Crafter, he was there, yep. you know, and yep. um, we actually did uh, like a a, a craft off, yes, which was did. fun. Yes, you did. <laughs> and the craft father won the craft off. I, I, I remember. <laughs> I, everyone was just like, everyone was like, they, like all really good builds, and then there's yours, and everyone was like, no, <laughs> respect. <laughs> like they, it was, it was such a cool, again, such a cool uh, feature. It's, again, what I talked to you about as well. Uh, more future. It's that's where I got my idea for what I want to do coming up next on on uh, this year on the stream. Like inspired by that by that by that event you guys had there. I thought yeah, it, I thought it was what a, a cool lot event. Of fun. It was a lot of fun showcasing what you can do. And also, you know, that's another thing I like about the stream is like you don't have to spend enormous amounts of time on the craft. Like you can build stuff quickly. And I think you know that's one thing we get. We've gotten pretty good. 
like or it's taught me like on the stream like in a small period of time if you sit down and dedicate a couple hours you can crank out you can crank out um some some really cool terrain in such a short period of time it's great oh yeah it's yeah great. and my my thing was like kind of i'm going bigger i'm going home you know so i'm like yeah. i'm gonna make this thing you know the biggest most impressive i can in three hours you know which i was working to the last second was it a t what did you build what did you build do you have it do you have it there? i do not i i okay. uh they were gonna do like a um an auction thing with oh, it cool. so I, I allowed that to happen nice um for like charity so i did that but it was like um it was basically like the side of a cl of a mountain mm -hmm. where there was a cave um with this tentacled creature coming out of the cave That's and it right. had like had like these the stairways stairway coming up to it you know did and, you build um, a giant tongue for it too <laughs> <laughs> I mm. had the I had these giant tentacles. It was tentacles. I rem yeah, so that's yeah, what I must yeah, be remembering. Yeah. I must be remembering yeah. the tentacles because I but they were remember... kind of tongue colored. They were kind of tongue. -colored. I remembered. I remember like things protruding from the side of the build that I was just like, how did he build that in such a short period of time? <laughs> The like, tendrils oh, actually man. weren't dry yet <laughs> by the end. <laughs> um, I used fabric. I used fabric stiffener because I thought it might dry faster than yep. the white glue. It did not. I think the white glue would have actually been drier been than. <laughs> yeah, it would have been better than the uh, than the fabric the fabric stiffener. Dude. But yeah, but um, but the next day it was rock solid. Like it was yeah. It was just like I showed you with the stuff. Love it. Um, but yeah, it was like. The, so DMG, they, they, the DMG info has just commented, I was robbed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds, awesome. uh, uh, welcome, welcome to the stream, DMG uh, info. Uh, you'll, <laughs> hey, you'll, buddy, you'll, Garrett. Uh, yeah, well, welcome, welcome, Garrett. Uh, you sounds, sounds like a rematch, uh, sounds like a gauntlet. <laughs> Just got oh, I'm sure down. I'm sure a rematch is in the make. Is it, the it sounds like he may need to come onto the stream and make his case directly to us. Ooh. As to why that. That sounds like a good idea for me. That's not a bad idea. I, I wouldn't think about that amazing uh, theater project you've been working on, DMG Info. We've talked about you yeah. several times in the stream. We love that project. Yep. So why don't Absolutely. you come on yeah. here and, and tell us exactly <laughs> how DM Scotty stole the crown away from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that 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 I mean, we'll have you we'll have you on to showcase the the terrain tutorial, but we'll really it'll be the platform to show to 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 argue why why the why that was stolen from you. That's that's what it'll really be. I won the golden mace. I won the golden mace, which is essentially like a dowel with a with a nerf a nerf ball on the end, painted gold. Yes. Oh, that's what we should do. That's a, that's perfect. It should be like a, like this like a lovely little silly eye. That's perfect. That it is. is it is perfect. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it's well, it's a little bit later in the day. I think when the stream starts for you, Gareth, it's about. 5 a.m. <laughs> on Monday morning for 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 folks down down in uh, down under there. So uh, that thanks for thanks for hopefully you've got some coffee and you're and you're and you're um, hanging out. But this is um, this has been a fantastic fantastic morning, Scotty. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Gareth. Check that out. Everyone else, check out his his mound. Ah, uh, I I will share with you. I added the mouth to mine. Oh, nice! I love it. So he's got his tongue. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I want to. Oh, I still want to add cool. some teeth to him. I've got some yeah. uh, some used bark laying around that I may try to chop up and Perfect. add a little bit of teeth uh, teeth to it. But really excited with how my how my how my my uh, one of my first well my first completed monster that I've ever ever ever, ever attempted. This is fantastic. Uh, I had a I had a blast building that Scotty. That that's a. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, that's a fun build. Um, well, this is definitely, as we say to, to everyone, uh, on, on the show, Scotty, it's, it's, it's been a lovely first go around, but it will not be the last time. I hope my friend, um, no, you're, you're more than welcome on here anytime. Um, we, we greatly appreciate you, you joining us today, taking the time and hanging out just to, to craft and share, share your passion with everyone out there, brother. Thank you so much. Oh uh, yeah. Any, anything to get more people into this hobby and to discover this hobby, uh, and how much fun it is, you know, I, make I'm, the sound, I'm in, Daniel. I'm in. What yeah, was that? What, make the sound. Make, you have make, to make the sound. Make the sound. What was it? It was a, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Like show, put those up to the camera there, brother. Let's see where you got to. You made your, your three, your three little, dude, look at those. Those there's, are, there's Birdo. 
They're so, like shambling mound familiars, is what they look like. Yeah, there's, and there's, uh, there's Doggo, and you can. Rah! And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh uh and then just a, a humanoid of some kind right because you gotta you gotta do that so i'm making a a menagerie Dude. a grass menagerie a gra- uh, uh, i see what you did there i'm not even ashamed of that <laughs> not even ashamed oh my of goodness it. well the, we're going to wrap it up here today, folks. Um, if you have not done so already, please be sure uh, to to uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content. Thank you so much. We're here every Sunday with new crafting terrain tutorials. Scotty, thank you so much, brother, for, for coming out with us today. Very welcome. Michael Very welcome. and Daniel, as always, a joy. To everyone else that joined us out there, we'll see you next week. Be sure to craft your passion daily. Peace, love, stay healthy out there, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Go forth and craft. Yeah! Yes! (laughs) (laughs) Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody.